Peace to the gods. Peace to the gods. You surveil here. What's going on? What's going on? Everybody get in. Let's get those likes up. Blessed up, blessed up. What's up? What's up? Sound check good. Sound check good. I always appreciate that. Appreciate the got the sound check good. Got a real good show for you today. Want to get into some discussion today. I got to go deeper. I got to go deeper. You know, I was reading all of the comments on my video about, you know, is Kanye West racist? You know, and I, you know, I, I, I got all type of feedback. People were saying, I don't know what I'm talking about. Don't they know these are white people? What you're talking about? They didn't take nothing. They didn't stole everything. They stole our identity. Use of what is you talking about, man? You don't know what you're talking about. Kanye West tripping and flipping. He put on that damn white lives matter shirt. He talking about slavery was a choice. What the fuck is you talking about, Yusufel? You don't know what the hell you talking about, nigga. That's what it was, right? That's what y'all was saying, right? You don't know what he's talking about. So we're going to go deeper. And I'm going to show you today that I always know what I'm talking about. And I'm always thinking ahead and on deeper levels on all this kind of stuff. And there's a couple of things I want to address today. Peace, peace, peace. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? We get the likes up. Let's get the likes up. Get the likes over 100. Let's give it like over 100. The first thing I want to talk about, I want to address a few things. I want to go back when Kanye West said that slavery was a choice. And all you niggas out there got upset because he said slavery was a choice. You became incensed. You know, how could he be, how could this be a real black man say something like that? This brother had to have sold out, right? This is what you're thinking. And this is the thing, this, this is what I say about not knowing natural law. This is what I mean about not knowing natural law. Yeah, my glasses real quick. This is what I mean about not knowing natural law. When people don't know natural law, and you say something like that, they get, they get upset. It's only because you haven't been trained to think properly. And on this channel, we, we, we have esoteric training on this channel. We know that the first principle of nature is mentalism, that everything is subject to the mind, that nothing comes into your space unless you think about it. And that's a hard pill for a lot of people to swallow, but as soon as Kanye West said it, I understood what he was talking about because he's surrounded by a circle of people who they all understand the laws of nature and the mental laws. Nothing comes into your space unless you think about it. Didn't y'all go and watch the movie The Secret? And they were talking about those um, um, those natives. How when you know the uh, uh, the ink the uh, Europeans showed up and they thought you know they couldn't imagine it. They didn't see the ships and everything because they hadn't seen anything like that. You know they couldn't hadn't contemplated that. Now, you know they brought that into their space. You know uh, it goes on to explain how, but. Nothing comes into your space unless you bring it into your space, either through not necessarily directly thinking about it, like, you know, you're thinking directly I'm going to be into slavery, but you are on a, you're on a vibrational frequency. You choose to vibrate at a certain frequency that attracts that type of condition into your life. You know, we always use the example of like when you have a car accident, people will say, well, you know, I wasn't thinking of having a car accident. No, you weren't thinking of having a car accident, but what you were doing, you were vibrating at a frequency that matched the frequency of a car accident. And that was the nearest thing that could come into your space. Like attracts like. All right. So when he said it was a choice, the choice lies into the fact that we live in a free will universe and everything is free will. And it's only the victim mentality people who feel like they're helpless and feel like there is no way that they can do anything that, you know, when you say something like that, it offends them. As soon as Kanye West said that slavery was a choice, I understood exactly what he was saying. But you have to go into the esoteric meaning of that particular statement. That's the only explanation it could be for something like that. It wouldn't be that, oh, you just, you got put into slavery and you just wanted to be in slavery. 
All right, that's not what's being said. That's being said, we allowed our people to descend. Something happened to us. All right, we were elevated to a high station when we were in Egypt and Samaria. We built all this civilization, but something happened and we had a fall. We had a fall. And that fall was our own doing. We have to accept that fact. Anything else, you become a victim and we don't have victims on high frequency radio. Everybody over here is a God. And gods do fall. That's what the explanation is for, you know, you decided to be a slave. Okay. The next thing I want to remind everybody about something. When you talk about these Jews, when you have a platform like mine, Jews own YouTube. They own it. They own YouTube, they own Facebook, they own Instagram, they own Clubhouse, they own the music biz, the old music industry, they own they own all of the news channels, they own all of Hollywood, they own all the banking system. Where the fuck y'all been? Where have you been? Why why you don't know this? This is a question that I have to pose to you. How come you don't know this? How come you've been listening to the news and just believe everything these people tell you on the news? Uh, why is that? Why is that? Why are you so facile and fickle-minded and so lacking in understanding and perception that you don't know who rules the world, who your masters are? You don't like that, huh? I had somebody say, Jews, white people. Now I got a homeboy like that. He talks like that, you know. He just, you know, just ignorant. Just ignorant. You know, you're just ignorant. Just ignorant. You're just going to be ignorant like that. You know what I'm saying? It's just hard for me. I got to penetrate through all this ignorance. So today, I'm going to take up the challenge. And all of you, I want you to send out this video far and wide because there ain't going to be too many people on YouTube doing videos like this, going to try to walk this line like this. Ain't no, cause they ain't got the balls to do it. Ain't got the heart to do it. They ain't got the heart to do it. You know, they just don't have it. You're only gonna see it here on this channel right here. It ain't, ain't nowhere else they could do it. All right, so we're gonna try to delve into this a little bit. Check, check. What do you mean that everybody has sound? Another one has sound. Jonathan uh, and Dro Druni. You know, so you need might need to, you know, you might need to turn on the volume on your on your on your headset. But anyway. How to share it. It's right under the video. What do you mean how to share it? It's right under the video. See a little button under the video? Push the button under the video and then it pops up. Instagram, Facebook, all type of social media pops up. You can share this probably on about 20 different pat platforms. All right. All right, so I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to delve into this, and hopefully, I don't offend anyone. I'm not trying. I'm not here to offend anybody. I'm not here to point blame. But I'm gonna start out by saying this: Somebody got mad at me because they said that I said that the Jews didn't take anything. They got everything fair and square, and a lot of people got upset about that. Okay, when I made that statement, I made it from the mindset. See, I think like a god. I never ever blame anybody for something that happens to me. I just don't do it. I just don't do it. How can you, a God is anything or anyone who's in control. So at the point that you are not in control, you are no longer a God. You're not the God of your space. You're not the God of your surroundings. You're not an L, okay? You're not any of those things. So anytime I speak, I speak like that, okay? And when I say that, okay, with the Jews, all right, you get mad. You say, okay, you know, they tricked us out of the land. You know, they, uh, they, uh, you know, they stole X, Y, Z. They stole our identity. They did this and did this. Okay, let's 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 look at this. All right, what happened to you? How you keep falling for it? Okay, they if they tricked you, you fell for the trick. How are you gonna say that they took everything when you could have just stopped buying they they merchandise? There was a very beautiful uh, statement in the protocols of the learned elders of Zion, where. He was speaking about the going and, you know, currently we're thirty one trillion dollars in debt. And he even made the statement. He said the United States government didn't have to come to them to borrow no money. He said they could have went to their own people. 
but they chose not to go to their own people and went to them. You see that? That was a choice. That was a choice. That was a choice, man. It was kind of like with Edward Mandelhaus when Woodrow Wilson signed the bill for the Federal Reserve Act. That was a choice. That was somebody's choice who did that, man. They didn't make nobody do that. They didn't make any of that. You know, I read this document called the Jewish shekels. And, you know, the Jews in England, they weren't allowed to own land. This was during feudalism. They weren't allowed to own land. So what they came up with, they devised a system where they could loan money because they were the money, original money changes, original bankers and lenders, where they could loan money out at interest and then use the land as collateral. I think this is kind of like today, like banks don't really own land. Like you hear the people say that banks can't own real estate and things like that. I don't think that they own it, but they have a security interest in it. It's an interest in the property. So they convey, they take the property from one person and convey it to somebody else. Okay, they're not interested in owning the land or anything like that. But when I go back and I examine everything uh, that these people have allegedly done that, you know, upsets a lot of people. They were kicked out of 1,100 different countries and a lot of other things. I've done a lot of background search. At, you know, I probably won't even say on the air today. Some things I might not touch on. However, when I look at it, it is always the choice of the individuals they had to deal with these individuals or to take money from them or, you know, and these different things like that. You chose to do that. The King of England, he got heavily in debt to the Rothschilds. He went and borrowed money from the Rothschilds, you know. They devised the scheme. They understood, first and foremost, the lifeblood of a country was the money and not the laws. This is why Mayor M. Shell Rothschild said, I care not who makes who the laws of a country. Give me instead the control of the money. Okay, they were get, got in control of the money. They concentrated their efforts in on that, and you allowed it to happen. You allowed it to happen. You allowed it to happen. This is why I'm talking like this. You know, you mad at these people and everything and they tricked you because they had that they, they use their brain and they focus on things a little bit more than you. You still up and I guarantee you some of you just st- sitting up right now criticizing me. You sitting up there smoking weed and doing something like that, playing fucking PlayStation or some playing with yourself on a porn site or something like that. Yeah, you sitting here in front of me criticizing me for something I said because I'm willing to take full accountability for my situation and you're not. You want to blame somebody for something. That's the problem we have in the world today. There is a maxim of law, Big Jersey. It said, and you know, that was Jordan Maxwell put that out for everybody. It says a Roman maxim that says, he who can be deceived, let him. If you can be deceived, that's your own damn fault. If somebody trick you, that's on you. That's on you. If you got a game ran on you. You know, you got to charge that to the game. It's like when, you know, you know, like with a female, you know, she gets you and everything. You know, I, I, I've gotten got before. I had to charge it to the game. I'm not going to sit around pouting about it because I can't go back in time. I can only move forward. All right? So what's done has been done. So what you need to be thinking about right now is how you're going to address the situation. You know, um, pay, PayPal and I think some of the other financial institutions said they're going to charge, start charging people a $2,500 fine. You know, if you kind of like speak out and say some things that are could be interpreted in, or construed in a negative light the way that they think it could be construed. Th- that means that your banks are getting into the political platform, which also tells you who owns them. Who owns them? All right? They don't want you saying nothing. They own the banks, which, which right there that confirmed to me that maybe I shouldn't be keeping my money in the bank like that. Maybe I should be taking my money and putting it in assets like I'm supposed to and getting it out of these banks because for them to come forward and say something like that, that, you know, hey, you know, we just, we don't think that, you know, what is that right there? You know, they're going to come forward and just say that, you know, it's like, it's crazy. Some of the things that are happening, but the name of this show today is secure party versus socialism. Yeah, there's some people that blame them. They blame them. They always blame them. That's why they continuously stay in power because the blame, the victims, 
They play the role of a Check, check, check. Okay, there we go. Sorry about that. I don't know why the audio went out. I got it, I got it, I got it. Okay, we're back, we're back, we're back. I see it, I see it. I don't have to go crazy. I'm paying attention. Hey, y'all, look, I'm paying attention to my my audio spikes, all right? So you ain't got to worry. You ain't got, y'all ain't got to go crazy in the chat. I'm watching. I'm watching everything. I'm paying attention to it. I saw, I looked over and glanced off. Oh shit. You know, it went out and everything. I don't know what, I don't know what's happening with that right there. I gotta, I gotta find out what's going on. Cause it'll just stop. I, I could be talking. It'll stop. All right. You know, so, you know, just know that. All right. Let me get, let me get all this back up. Okay. All right. So let me get back to what I was saying. What I was saying was, is that you got to be responsible for you and stop being a victim and understand how the laws of the universe operate. The reason that I, I take the position that I take on a lot of things because I'm always thinking in those terms. I understand that I have the ultimate control over everything by the way that I choose to think about a particular matter. That's the ultimate choice. It's called a free will universe. Back to Kanye West when he said that slavery was a choice. It was a choice, all right? Not maybe not a choice in the sense that you think, because you tend to think in a very physical type of matter. You think on the pl- on the plane of effects. All right, uh, Kanye West is talking on the fl- on the plane of causation. What was the ultimate cause? What was the root cause of you ending up in the situation that you ended up in? And ultimately, the ultimate root cause of everything is how you choose to think. Okay, the vibrational frequency that you emit out into the universe that returns to you in like kind. You are in any situation, you are the ultimate person responsible for that. And I know people don't want to accept that fact. They don't want to accept it, and that is why you will continue to suffer. Because I'm te- what right now what I'm speaking to you is called a natural law, which is an immutable law. Okay, it's not a respect of persons. It don't care what the fuck you think about it. It doesn't matter what how you feel and everything like people. I feel what I feel, you know, this feminine type of mindset as that, that centers around how you feel about something. That's not it is because it's an active principle and it's masculine. Okay, the active principle is masculine. The cause is masculine. The effect is feminine. All right. So the masculine principle don't care how you feel about something. It's an active principle. It's going to direct something to occur, cause and effect. For every effect, there's a cause. For every cause, there's an effect. If you choose to think a certain way, there's an, a direct corresponding result associated with that mode of thinking. That's why the second principle is correspondence. All right? Manifestation occurs cor- that corresponds with the type of thoughts that you emit out into the universe vibrational frequencies. 
This is as above, so below. As above, above is the spiritual plane. It's the mental plane. Below is the physical plane. That's what they mean when they say as above, so below. As above, whatever your lofty thoughts are, so it will be on the physical plane. You can always determine a person's thoughts by looking at their physical condition. I know y'all missed a minute. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going back over it again. That's what I'm doing right now. Just letting you know how somebody said, well, you know, they stole something from us. Or, you know, how could you say that they did everything fair and square? They did everything fair and square because they chose to operate on a higher mental plane. And you have that same ability, but you're choosing not to. You're choosing to uh, reside on a lower vibrational frequency. You're allowing that. You're choosing to indulge in activities that have low vibrational frequencies. That's nobody's fault but your own. You know, it's nobody's fault but your own. Come on, man. It's a free will universe. It's a free will universe. The United States government, everything that is associated with the benefits and privileges that the United States government is offering to you is called a voluntary system. Voluntary is still, it, it could be threat, duress, and coercion. You still voluntarily submit to that. Because it tells you in the Bible, be faithful unto death and I shall give you the crown of life. Faith without works is dead. All right, you're going to be tested. You're going to be tested, but it's still a voluntary exercise. You choose to do it. You choose to succumb to fear. You choose to come, succumb to threat, duress, and intimidation. You choose to succumb to somebody's temptations. You choose to do that. That's your choice. Fear is a choice. A lot of people don't want to accept that. You don't want to accept that, though. You don't want to accept it, though. So when I say something, when you are on my channel and you hear me say something, I want you to remind yourself when I make a statement, okay, I'm making a statement from the position of a person who's a God, a, a position with a person who is responsible for his own actions. This is why I don't blame other people. Even the stuff that Kanye West is talking about, those athletes and entertainers, they choose to get those contracts and get those contracts. They choose to enter into those contracts. They choose to enter. I remember I was watching the um, the Michael Jordan uh, story and um, uh, when, uh, you know, Scottie Pippen, the contract he was in, and the Jew wouldn't let him out, you know, uh, Jerry Krause. You know, wouldn't let him out of the contract. But he had warned him before he signed the contract. Say, look, you might not want to sign this. But, you know, he was poor and he needed some money. You know, and he wanted to get something for his family, so he signed it. Later on, he found out it was in a bad deal. You know, that's why I give LeBron James a lot of props, man. I give LeBron James a lot of props, man. You know, uh, Adidas was, you know, it was Reebok came to him when he was still in high school. He was still in high school. And a man offered him a $10 million check. He came, he invited him. We was in school. I was, I think it was his lunch break. And he went to go see the man. The man had a $10 million check for him. And he turned the check down and went back to school. Hey, it's a decision that you make. He bet it on himself. He knew that if uh, Reebok was offering him this, Nike is going to offer him something more or Adidas or somebody like that. If Reebok is trying to get ahead of the curve and hit him with a $10 million contract, guess what Nike got waiting for him? He understood that in high school. But it was a choice. He made a choice. It's, it's what you choose to do. A lot of these cats, you know, they're in the music industry. They, you know, they find themselves in a situation where they have to compromise some of their principles that they live by, maybe even their manhood, because they choose to be famous. You know, I heard a, a young man tell me one time that, you know, I told him, I said, well, look, you know, if you get in, he wanted to be in the music business real bad. And I said, well, look, you hear what's happening in the music business. It's like, you may have to, you know, give up your manhood. And he told me it's better than living out here. He understood what was what was at stake and he's and he was what don't you understand there are people in there that they're willing they willingly do those things they're not they're not victims all for the all for because they get to have sex with beautiful women and 
and have a free lifestyle. That's what they tell them too. They say, well, you want to live the rest of your life as an average person or do you want to come up here and live this spectacular life? And then it goes right into what the book of wisdom and the book of uh, the, in the Bible is called the book of wisdom of the book of the wisdom of Solomon in the second chapter where it talks about these type of people with well, these type of people. They're not spiritual at all because they don't think there's any life after death. They don't think there's a judgment day. They don't think there's anything like that. They think that, Hey, I got to have my heaven right now. Nobody knows what's after this. We live here and we ain't nobody came back and told us there's a heaven or a hell after this. Nobody truly knows. Only thing I can do is I got to take the opportunity that I have now in this one life and live this life as best as I can. And it's hard to, it's hard to argue with that line of thinking because it's not illogical. It's not that illogical based off their level of understanding because they are absolutely right. They don't have any evidence of anything. So, Hey, I'll do it. That was a choice. Everything is a choice. You always have a choice. You always have a choice. Anytime somebody tries to tell you you don't have a choice, you always have a choice. You always have a choice. Next, I'm going to talk about this secure party versus communism right quick. I've been studying communism, socialism, and Marxism. And the thing about it, what, I, what I've seen, and it, it, it answers so many questions for me. I started off by watching a video called Hitler, the Greatest Story Never Told. It had almost 2 million views on YouTube before they took it off. You know, they scraped it off the internet. I also watched a video called um, Benjamin Friedman, his speech, his 1961 speech at the Willard Hotel. I'm giving you two videos for you to do some research. Now, if you choose not to go and listen to those videos, because the uh, Hill of the Greatest Story Never Told is 12 hours long, uh, Benjamin Freeman, that's about two hours long. But if you choose not to, then you choose to keep moving in ignorance, and you should reserve your comments before you st make a statement about something because you ignorant. Because I just gave you a source, and you chose to ignore it. So you are ignorant ignorant and now you are making and you chose free will chose to remain ignorant and continue to tread the path of ignorance that you're walking right now I, of your own free will Europa, the last battle, watch that. Too. All that is on my bit shoot, all of them. Europa, the last battle, Hill of the greatest story never told, and Anna, uh, Anna, Anna, Anna Benjamin Friedman. The link is in the description. And also the, uh, um, uh, oh, that research that was done about what's going on in Hollywood with the child molestations and things like that. I got all that stuff on there. Somebody told me I ain't did any research. I was like, what the hell are you talking about, man? You can't, if you're going by YouTube, you can't find anything. You're not going to find anything on YouTube. They scrape the internet. They scrape YouTube uh, off, everything off of YouTube. And they're still doing it. But what's really interesting, I hope the owners of YouTube are listening to me, that this Jewish individual who made the comment at the top of my uh, Kanye West video, he said he's a Zionist Jew. And he's talking about black people are, are shiftless and lazy. He sent me a link to a video that almost has 2 million views. I'll put the link in the description after this where they were calling us niggas and we're shiftless and lazy. We get arrested. We do drugs. You know, they were talking about all this. And, and another one, I almost forgot about Rabbi Finkelstein, the interview with James Wickstrom and Rabbi Finkelstein. Some people will say that as fake. But what's really interesting, when they say all these things are fake, when you listen to the individual, everything in it is real. Like he's the one who told me, uh, Rabbi Finkelstein is the one that told me where to find the book, My Relevant Defense. That's written in 1938. That tells the reason why they've been kicked out of so many countries. Well, at least allegedly. And it has documented court cases. There are so many, there are so many um, countries right now where you will get arrested for saying that the, uh, 
for saying that the Holocaust didn't happen. They'll have you arrested and thrown in jail just for saying that. Do you know that? That's what happened in, like, the prime minister of, of Germany right now thinks she's Jewish. You know, they put their people in place after they came and, you know, they got all the people in place, same thing they're doing in the United States right now. They put all their people in place and all the positions of power right there in Oregon right now. They're running all those ads on. They're running all these ads on, on, on YouTube. They got these females running for governor out there in Oregon. And I happened to look up the lady's name. And I said, well, let me see if she's Jewish. She's Jewish. She's Jewish. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like you keep looking around. They are actively doing things. I can't say they're wrong. They're, they're hey. They getting in the game. You ain't in the game. You are preoccupied with bullshit. I heard a Jew tell me one time, he said, man, don't buy anything retail. He said, you know, Jews are the biggest wholesalers in the entire world. They don't buy anything retail. That's why I was telling you the other day, when you walk through the mall, do you see these people in the mall? You see them in the mall? You don't see them in the mall? I was up in New York. At a very expensive hotel, I had uh, we were up there to see a sheik. One of me, one of me and my friends. He's a very wealthy gentleman. He's a real estate developer. We were up there to see a sheik, and I saw Chris Rock in there. I ain't gonna tell you, uh, you know, uh, what they were doing, but you can see that these people, they are, they in control of everything. Let me just say it like that: they in control of everything, and they have been construed as. White people. Now, Dontell Jackson, I'm just giving y'all sources. This is on the internet. Don't get mad at me. It's on the internet. Dontell Jackson wrote an article, wrote a book. They've taken the book off Amazon, but some of the articles are still on YouTube. It is how Zionist Jews or how communist Jews weaponize blacks against whites. You can put that in Google. How com Dontell Jackson, how communist Jews weaponize blacks against whites. Now, I think what, what Kanye West and even myself and some of us are trying to say is that my people, I'm tired of my people being a pawn on the chessboard. That's all this is about. You know, we had a hundred, let me, let me, I want all the Jewish people to listen to me very closely. All right. We understand Holocaust because 100 million of my people were killed in the Middle Passage and bringing slaves over to the United States. They were thrown over off ships. You know, they were tied up, gagged, beat down in slave ships and things like that. But, you know, we're not allowed to talk kind of about that anymore and everything, but we're also led to believe that white people were the owners of these slave ships. Check your record. We believe that. I got another video on my bit shoot that talks about that too. You know, I think it's time for, you know, our people to kind of wake up. You know, you've been asleep for a very long time. You've been asleep. You're watch, sitting in front of there watching CNN, just soaking up everything. Here's the weird thing about black people too. This, this right here is weird to me. This is weird to me. Black people will talk about white people how racist they are. We live under white supremacy and believe every fucking thing that's said on the news. It's the weirdest fucking shit ever. It is the weirdest shit ever. It's weird as hell to me. It's weird. It's weird. They'll sit there and say that, you know, oh, they are white supremacy. We're under white supremacy. Run straight to the news and believe everything they see on the news. Just believe everything. Just believe whatever narrative that is being provided for them, they will just believe it. They won't do any research on their own, even though they have at their disposal, okay, a physical Akashic records, all right, where they have access to anything. There used to be a switch on Google. You know, right now, Google has changed their algorithm right now. So when you Google something, only the stuff they want you to see pops up. So you're going to have to get a Tor browser, T-O-R. You can Google that. Get you a Tor browser, and you're going to have to go into the deep web or use some alternative systems. In my, in my opinion, Google is not, is, it's not even good for research anymore, too much. It's not even good. It's been totally you know, corrupted as far as that goes. They're trying to keep you inside of a box and try to keep you within a certain uh, span of information. They used to have the, you used to turn that limiter off. I don't see how to do it anymore. We used to have it where you could turn it off. But right now, when you Google something, the only results you're going to get 
is something that they want you to know about. They don't want you to know about the alternative information that is out there. Okay. Just saying. All right. Now, once again, I'm just putting out resources for you right now. So you can start doing your own research so we can get a balanced perspective of what's going on. But what I am going to say at the end of the day that I don't blame anybody for anything because we have what? The seven principles. The first principle being mentalism. All is mine. The universe is mental. And then we have correspondence. As above, so below. As in the mental plane, so it will be on the physical plane. And then we have vibration. Everything that you see in creation is a vibrational frequency. That means everything is subject to control of sound or to thoughts or words. Words have power. Everything, everything resolves itself down into a frequency. All right? Then we have polarity. There are two sides to everything. All you people, you saying, you know, uh, talking about there are more than two genders, take note. There are only two sides to everything. Up, down, right, left, hard, soft, night, day, fast, slow, courage, fear. Everything has two sides. Everything has a polarity. That's why there's the, that's also the reason why, and I saw this on, on, on a, a Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. I was just watching that on the plane again. You know, it's an old movie. But I saw, you know, they poisoned the guy at the end. And I love how the girl said, what do you mean there's not a cure? There's a, she said, there's, every, there's a reciprocal to everything. And she was absolutely right. You see how being trained and natural law will let you know that how asinine it is for somebody to say that there's something that doesn't have a cure? That's asinine. The, pro the proper statement should be, we don't know what the cure is. But everything can be reversed. They even have a legal maxim. A thing is unbound the way it is bound. That's in the back of your law, Black's Law Dictionary. A thing is unbound the way it is bound. Have you wrapped something up? You unwrap it how you wrapped it up. Everything has a reciprocal action. Everything has two sides. Everything has a polarity. You can reverse the polarity. You can reverse the polarity of gravity and make things levitate. Edward Lee Scalin down in the Coral Gardens in Florida, he accomplished his feat. He built something the same way the Egyptians did. Allegedly, he's the cousin of Nikola Tesla. One was an electrical genius, and the other one was a genius with magnetism. You just hear about one more so than the other. We're going to get to it today. It's going to be a lot of education dispelled on this, or dispensed on this particular platform today. I'm going to talk about some things. All right? The feminine is receptive. Absolutely correct. And the masculine is active. Okay? It's just like when you have sex. The man impregnates the female. Just like with the seed. The seed impregnates Mother Earth. Just like thoughts. Thoughts impregnate Mother Nature. All right? Your thoughts, Mother Nature, she has to receive something and she gives it back in like kind. Everything that is feminine receives something and gives it back in like kind. The, the, the subconscious mind is feminine. The conscious mind is masculine. The conscious mind is the provider and protector of the subconscious mind. All right. This is why they have a proverb that says, guard your heart for out of it are the issues of life. Or more specifically, because heart means mind, if you get you an Oxford Unabridged Dictionary and you do the research on the word heart, usually heart means mind. All right, so it's guard your mind for out of it are the issues of life. You, the conscious mind, is the guardian at the gate. It decides on what information it will allow in and what information it will allow out. This is the reason hypnotism is so effective. Hypnotism is the art of bypassing the subconscious mind. All you Scientologists out there, you know what I'm talking about. You all right. Everything that y'all talk about, this trauma is based off the shutting down of the subconscious mind and putting these engrams in the, I mean, shutting down of the conscious mind or what you call the analytical mind and putting all of these engrams in your subconscious mind or what you call the reactive mind based on the, based off of some sort of trauma that such shuts down the conscious mind. In order to program the subconscious mind, you got to shut down the conscious mind. This is what hypnotism does. You can be hypnotized if I can bypass your conscious mind. Which a lot of this is occurring on the news. When you're watching the news, a lot of y'all 
conscious mind gets shut the fuck down. And you're just operating solely on your subconscious mind. This is also why they call it a negative mind. Negative doesn't mean bad. Negative means receptive. I mean, just like with a battery pole, you have two poles, the positive and negative. The positive ions flow to the negative side of the battery. One is, one is active and one is receptive. That principle is all throughout the universe. You can't argue with it. You know why you can't argue with it? Because it's something that's observable in nature. All right? Nature is the baseline for everything, okay? This is why you have to study natural laws. If we had a good study of natural laws, that would eliminate also some of these people out here that are giving relationship advice, who don't know what the fuck they're talking about, all right? When they say, well, you know, a woman can lead, a woman can be like a man, and, you know, we feel like women can do what the men think, things that men do. No, you're not a woman. It's not a man and a man is not a woman i will never tell what well, times have changed it ain't changed because y'all still having babies y'all still having babies man can't have a baby it don't matter for the next ten thousand years you will be the one having children now what you try to do is figure out a way to make men stay at home and take care of the ch- children while you run the streets but the only kind of man that's that's gonna that's gonna happen with is a weak-minded man uh Feminine man, a masculine man, he's going to be on his purpose. He's going to be out trying to conquer the world. That's what we do. That's what we do. I know we got some feminists on here. You don't like what I'm saying. I'm not even going to go down that road with y'all right now because I've watched so many shows with y'all. We all demonstrate a complete inability of rational thinking and logic that it combabbles the mind that, you know, somebody would even engage and continue to have a conversation with you. So, I had to lay down some, oh, wait a minute, let me finish the natural law. So we had, well, let me recap. We had mentalism, correspondence, vibration, polarity, rhythm, Everything has a rhythm. Everything has a cycle. Everything has a season. Goes through its seasons. Then we have cause and effect. Cause and effect is what gives order to the universe. Cause and effect is what allows planes to fly. Cause and effect is allowed battleships to float on the ocean. Cause and effect. If you do something exactly the same way every time, you will always get the exact same result. The only way you will get a different result is if you change something in the process. This is why there is no such thing as luck. Luck is the name. Uh, luck is a name for a law that is not recognized or not identified. Luck is just a name for a law that has not been identified. There's no such thing as luck. And of course, the final principle of the universe is gender, masculine and feminine. There is a masculine and feminine principle in it, everything. And this is not talking about penises and vaginas, only the debase, uh, low thinking individual thinks in those terms. I could easily, the, you know, the yin and the yang, the positive and the negative, the male and female. These, are, these have different attributes. This is why you as a woman, you can never be a man. When you start trying to be a man, you are unnatural. You're unnatural. And when women and when men act like women, they're unnatural. This is why it's against God. Because God created nature. And this is also why, you know, a lot of people like to talk about the Egyptians and, you know, kind of like say, you know, they were animal worshipers. No, they weren't animal worshipers. They just understood that animals are the only creatures that stay true to their nature. You as a human being who have been endowed with the ability of free will chose not to. You want to you try to move away from your nature. Which, there's going to be an effect of that. And it can't be anything good because nature favors, favors balancement and anytime an imbalance occurs in nature, it will reestablish itself. This is called karma. The scales of justice. The balancing of the scales. And we should know this. If we knew these principles, it would alleviate all they're doing is demonstrating to the entire world 
when some of you engage in some of these discussions is how ignorant you are of natural law, that you are publicly admitting that you are not qualified to lead or in any kind of way to be a front runner in the human race, that you're primitives. Come on, man. We got some Masons on here, some Rosicrucians, some Skull and Bones, some Illuminati. Y'all hear me? I know y'all, y'all don't matter about y'all little organization. We all follow the same laws. We all, some of y'all more advanced in degrees than others, but you all know the law. You know the law. You know the law just as much. I don't care how high in secrecy you sit in somewhere. You could be sitting right next to some demon, all right? Some 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 print de- prince demon or something like that. You still know what the laws are. And you understand the object of the game is to make somebody do something to themselves. We got some reptilians out there listening too. You know the game. You know what the game is. Object of the game is to make them do it to themselves so you can circumvent karma. This is why it is incumbent on people to understand in a free will universe, it is impossible for you to be a victim. That is what the left is utilizing to bring in the new world order, that you're a victim, that you can't help yourself. What do you think? In 1933, what the Great Depression was. All this stuff we're talking about on this channel, all right, this socialist, communist, Marxist regime that you're currently living under is the result of, in 1933, you told the government you couldn't take care of yourself. You couldn't take care of yourself. You couldn't take care of your family. We need the government to take care of us. It's called the Doctrine of Parents Patria. The government is your parent. And if you chose not to look up that word, that was your free will uh, your free will decision to remain in ignorance. Know the laws. Everything starts with the laws, not man made laws, not positive law. The creator of the boundless universe, his laws. I ain't talking about the 613 laws in the book of Leviticus and Deuteronomy. Those are statutes. Those were pronouncements made for a certain group of people. I'm talking about the principles that it talks about in Proverbs 9.1, where it says wisdom has hewn out her seven pillars. A pillar is what everything in creation rests on. And I just gave them to you. Everything in creation rests on those seven pillars. Wisdom is just another name for Mother Nature in the Bible. Mother Nature is the tool that the Creator utilizes to put everything into existence. Everything had to be, can't you see everything has been created wisely? Isn't it wise how we breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide and then the trees breathe in carbon dioxide and breathe out oxygen and then your silly ass cuts down all the trees and then you want to talk about, you know, how, the, the, how you know, we haven't, you know, the, the, the atmosphere is changing and different things like that. They tricking you, man. I was just listening to this dude, Noam Chowski, whatever his name is. Everybody just in the damn Comment section praising this man, talking about he's the great intellectual of the 20th century. I've listened to him a couple of times, but I didn't realize that he was a socialist. And then when I found out he was a socialist, I said, let me look this man up and see what his nationality is. It's everywhere. They got your children. Let me tell you why socialism is unnatural. This is all for you, all of you Zionist Jews out there, and y'all already know this. This is for the Zionists out there watching me who don't like me. All right. And for all of you people who went to a liberal arts schools, you LBGTQ, and all you feminists out there and everybody out there like that. Let me tell you somehow you will never win. You will never get what you want. It's not happening. It's not happening. That's not the purpose. See, the people who are the people who are supporting you. All right, who are funding you, they know it's not going to happen. You just don't realize that you're a tool. 
you're a tool. The only way you're going to realize that you're a tool is when you understand natural law. And the only way that you will have a life worth living is only when you bring yourself into accordance with natural law. We don't have to talk about God. I know we got some atheists out here. Let me tell you something. An atheist, you're the biggest idiot on the planet because it should be self-evident that there is a higher power. Now, I don't, I'm not going to ascribe some sort of um, anthropomorphic qualities to this higher power that some of the more primitive individuals among our species happen to do, those who engage in religion. However, you should understand that there is a higher power. It's only one power in the universe. It's self-evident. You see evidence of that power when you look into nature. This is what the reasoning man, those with the ability to reason on higher levels, understand. We got somebody in, in there talking about apes destroy their own habitation. Look, only reason apes probably is acting out or any of the animals are acting out is because you take them out of, they, out of their habitat. These are wild animals. They're in the jungle. They do what they're supposed to do. They live according to their nature. That's an example of an individual don't reason well. You know, in the protocols of the learned other design, let me, 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 let me read this for you. Is this the roadmap for the new world order? The protocols of the learned elders of Zion.pdf. Oh, first one come up is the one in the FBI vault. If you go to vault.fbi.gov, you know, if you put that on, you know, you can, you know, FBI tweeted out the protocols of the learned elders of Zion. And then the Zionists made their ass apologize and shit. You can put that in, you know, they make everybody bend to their knee. They make you bend to your knee now. You're going to apologize. You see, you know, see how Kanye refused to apologize. They're cutting him off left and right. All right, no more sponsorship for you. Matter of fact, Jamie Dimon, the president of Chase, shut down his account and sent him back his money. Get out of my account. <laughs> hey, everybody got all the power now. They got all the power. All the power. Let's look at this right here. Let's look at this. So we got to understand this because on this channel, I'm an advocate. I'm a private property advocate. That's really what I am. I'm a private property and private rights advocate. I'm not a sovereign citizen. I'm not any of that dumbass fuck shit that you came up with, you liberals came up with. I figured, I, fi I finally found out who coined that phrase. It wasn't nothing but liberals and communists and socialists and people who are traitors to the Republic of the United States Constitution. Every time you see that word fly out of somebody's mouth, that is exactly what you are, okay? Because when you go to Chisholm versus Georgia, which is the first Supreme Court case in this country, the Supreme Court justices told you, who exactly the people of the United States of America were. That is what the whole question was surrounding that particular case. So if you don't understand that, you're a law student, you on here, shut the fuck up and also shut up and don't say the 11th Amendment ch uh, changed the goddamn thing. The United States has a sovereignty that's qualified as long as they remain within the ambit of their delegated authority, which is a territorial jurisdiction cut out and outlined in Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17 of the Constitution. You have Article 1, Section 8, Clause 3, which is the Commerce Clause. Y'all done changed everything in some sort of in commercial in nature. You have Article 1, Section 8, Clause 9. Congress can institute tribunals that are inferior to the Supreme Court, your U.S. District Courts. And the jurisdiction that you operate in, Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17. You can take your ass to the law library and get the United States Code Services book and turn to Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17 and find, find the case law that created the corporation. It ain't a goddamn conspiracy. Stop the cap. Woe unto you, Lord. Some of y'all just don't know, though. Some of y'all don't know. Some of y'all, I can't blame all of you. Some of you just don't know. Hold on, I'm turning back on my thing. I want to make sure I don't miss, I don't mess up my audio or nothing like that. You know, this thing, they cut me off. They got like, start using magic and everything. Just cut off the, uh, man, we got a lot of people on here today. How I many, man. Let's get the likes up. Let's get the likes. 428 people on here. It should be 300 likes. 
300 likes. Let's get it up. Let's send the algorithm out there. Share this also. You got to educate. You know, you really don't care about your brother. When you don't educate, make sure you don't educate your brother about the things that I'm saying right now. Because see, it take everybody not going to say this, man. Everybody not going to say this, man. I had, you know, I almost had 100,000 subscribers when they cut down my channel last time, man. I'm back again, doing it again. They said, we can't get rid of this nigga. He like a roach. <laughs> he will not go away. <laughs> but I'm just saying. So we're going to approach this delicate subject. And we're going to try. We're not going to promote anger. We're not going to, it's not going to be any hate speech or anything like that. It's just going to be, we're going to just discuss facts, things that can be proven and things that you have the capability of going out and reach researching for yourself. That's it. That's all we're going to do today. All right. You can research this for yourself. You know, you need to start out finding out with obviously, you know, Voltaire, he said it, you know, he said, if you want to know who your math, you know, I, I saw, I saw who was at the uh, prime minister of Israel. I saw him doing a speech. He was going in on Voltaire, you know, I think, I guess, but I haven't read any of Voltaire's work, but obviously he must have been something that Zionists, somebody Zionists don't like. But, you know, this thing where you haven't been able to criticize a certain group of people has been going on for a couple of hundred years. It's been going on for a long time, which is, once again, is amazing to me that people can't, that people, you know, they're just now cluing in on this. I mean, it's just, like, incredible to me. Anyway, let's look at this protocols to learn out of Zion real quick. I want to I want you to see what this man said. This man said something. He said something that was real interesting. It was real good. Where is this at? It's uh you should read this. I read the whole entire thing. I read the whole I looked at every, every word I know the meaning of. And it's right here on protocol number one. Let's read it. Don't even take long to get it. They start off protocols of learned other design this way. They start it off. Putting aside fine phrases. Wait a minute. Let me blow it up so I can, I, I want to be able to read it real good. You know, I can't see, you know, I don't wear a shade. Everybody said, where you get shades like this? He's not shades. He's glasses. Every time you see something on my face, it's glasses. I, I go and buy shades and convert them into glasses. I got progressive lenses and all of my, shades so you know every all my my i, I don't even, i don't go to the regular glass store anymore i go to you know some high-end places several shades and i take my shades and i convert them into glasses all right somebody was asking that question that's i'm putting you up on game that's how i did it anyway. um and anyway these are these right here are Cart cartiers these are cartiers cartiers all right but it goes on, it says, protocols of the me meetings of the learned elders of Zion. Putting aside fine phrases, we shall speak of the significance of each thought. By comparisons and deductions, we shall throw light upon surrounding facts. What I'm about to set forth then in our system from the two points of view, that of ourselves and that of the going, namely the non-Jews. It must be noted that men with bad instincts are more in number than the good. And therefore, the best results in governing them are attained by violence and terrorization and not by academic discussion. Every man aims at power. Everyone would love every, every man. Where is Wayne? Hold on. Let me use the place. Every man aims at power. Everyone would like to become a dictator if only he could. And rare indeed are the men who would not be willing to sacrifice the welfare of all for the sake of securing their own welfare. What has restrained the beast of prey who are called men? What has served for their guidance hitherto? In the beginning of the structure of society, they were subjected to brutal and blind force, afterwards to law, which is the same force, only disguised. I draw the conclusion that by the law of nature, right lies in force. Right lines and might. So we're right there at the beginning. They tell you their mindset. All right. Who's right? The one with the biggest guns. The ones with the biggest guns. You should read this document. This is a very, I've been, I've been thinking of making a video out of it, but I didn't do it because it's probably going to get taken down, you know, within five minutes of me posting it. But, you know, it is something. It was, and what's interesting, it was in the original um, 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 William Cooper's 
uh, Behold a Pale Horse, and they took it out of the new 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 copies. It's not in there. <laughs> that was incredible to me. They they took it out of the new copies of the protocols of the. I mean, out of the Behold a Pale Horse. That was incredible. Fortunately, I have me an old copy of uh, a Behold a Pale Horse. I'm so thankful for that. They just y'all just made that book very valuable. Let me just put that out there. The original copy of Behold a Pale Horse by William Cooper. If you don't have a copy of that book, you should. If you get on the internet and they have a PDF version of it, you should keep a copy of that book. Keep a copy of it. What do we have in here? Makes the video and put it on BitChute. Then put a link there on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, I should. Yeah, I do that. I was going to do that. Read it because, you know, I want to read that. I want to read that document because that is a very important document for people to read. Because you need to know about things like that. That Obviously, the FBI tweeted it out for a reason. It wasn't an accident. They didn't accidentally tweet it out. They tweeted it out because they wanted you to read it. But a lot of you dumb motherfuckers ain't going ain't to investigate it. You're just not. You're just not. There's something in you that... It's just some people who are, they just have an aversion to knowledge. They like to operate off of their own, lean on their own understanding, raw understanding of things that haven't been imbued with, with correction. You know, you know what I'm saying? It's having an imbued with any sort of correction. They just, they, they just lean in everything off their own understanding of things. They don't have a baseline um, to operate from. When I say baseline, I mean a platform, meaning a law, something that's immutable. You have to have something to base all of your decisions off of. And it has to be something that is unchanging. It can't be something that it changes. It has to be something unchanging. And the only thing that is immutable like that it has to be something out of nature, a natural law. That's it, or God's law. This is why they say God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. God is unchanging because there's no force outside of God to work change on God. Because if there were another force that could work change on God, then that would be God. Did y'all understand that? That, wasn't sound, that didn't sound too crazy, did it? We're getting all philosophical over here and everything. Okay. So communism. Communism and socialism and Marxism are essentially the same thing. Another book you have to read, you have to read The Communist Manifesto by Karl Marx. Karl Marx is Jewish. I don't think I'd be doing hate speech pointing that out. We'd have to do some investigation also into the Bolshevik Revolution in Russia. And some other things, you know what I'm saying? We got to go into history. But you can read right there. Let me pull up the Communist Manifesto and read it to you real quick. We got to read this thing, y'all. We got to know what we fight. Because y'all say, well, why are we talking about this? You We talking about this because this is a direct threat to, to everything we're doing. It's a direct, because it's the elimination of private property. You know, there's a public and a private, okay? What they're attempting to do is eliminate anything private. They're trying to get rid of the, they're trying to get rid of the private. And getting rid of the private, that's just another way of saying the government owns everything. Because the public means government. So if you can get rid of everything in the private, all private property, that means, that means only the public owns everything. It's just another way of saying the government owns everything. So let's look at this. I got the Communist Manifesto. Oh, let me put this in your link. Let me put some of these in your in the link so y'all can follow along. Where I got this at? Let's see. Live stream. Okay. This is the Communist Manifesto right here. This is the Communist Manifesto. All right. That's Communist Manifesto. Let me put the other ones in here too. Let me put this. Uh, was. I started reading, uh, let's see. I don't even want to mention his name right now. But I'll come back to that FBI tweet with the protocols learned others. But let, let's read this real quick. 
about private property. Private property. Y'all don't understand. Y'all don't understand it. Y'all all in the Socialist Party. Y'all, you know, you got all these people. They fuck. They want big government. Okay, let's look at this real quick. Let's see what it says right here. It says. It's coming straight out of the Communist Manifesto, Karl Marx. And it says. The distinguishing feature of communism is not the abolition of property generally, but the abolition of the bourgeois property, the wealthy class. But modern bourgeois private property is the final and most complete expression of the system of producing and appropriating products that is based on class antagonisms on the exploitation of the many by the few. In this sense, the theory of communists may be summed up in a single sentence, the abolition private property. Now this sounds like it's intelligent. Oh, he was a great mind. And it becomes ridiculous when you know natural law. It's only two things. He's either a devil with a plan or he just don't know no better. It's not a great intellectual mind to me. How are you going to get rid of something when nature says two sides to everything? You, 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 are y'all starting to understand why, how, when you know natural law, you can read some of this stuff, okay, and you can see where it's going to end up at? It don't take me long to come to a conclusion about someone or something once you have a principle right, that you can operate from. But if you don't have a principle that you're operating from that's rooted in natural law, then you become susceptible. This is why in the Bible it keeps telling you stick to God's law. And, that, and it's what's messed up is that they don't teach, they don't explain that because the word God is a German word. It comes from the word gut. The German language uh, didn't come into existence until around 700 AD. The word is only 1,300 years old. The word in Hebrew is Elohim. And we, I don't even know if we can say Hebrew because it really, the, really the language of Abraham was Chaldean. And he came out of Ur of, of Chaldea, which is Samaria, Babylon. This is why you have the seven tablets of creation that tell the same stories as the Bible. They don't want you to talk about that either. They don't want you to talk about that. We got to start going. We got to start going into all of these subjects, man. Because y'all, you know, y'all operated, you know, it really, we shouldn't even have to even go through all of this. Some of this stuff is so childish. The people who you are, who you are elevating to this level as some sort of, um, as some sort of uh, um, in great intellect, you know, they would be viewed by the Egyptians as childish. The Egyptians looked at the, uh, the, uh, the Greeks as primitives. Do y'all know that? Herodotus, who was the Greek historian, that's who I got that from. I just, want to, I just want y'all to understand. I'm not making that up on my own. Herodotus, the Greek historian, who was eyewitness to all of this stuff, he's the one that's where I'm, that's a quote from out of his books. It's not nothing I'm saying. Okay? You can go and re research this stuff, you know, and see it for yourself. Y'all elevating these people. Why do you think the Greek gods and the Roman gods all match up with the Egyptian gods? And the Egyptian gods and the Sumerian gods, y'all match up. Y'all just got these all the same people. Y'all just gave different names and all these different cultures. And don't want to ascribe the credit to the source. Like the Zionists was saying under my last thing, you know, y'all black people, all y'all did. Y'all just lazy and shiftless niggas. What do y'all call us? You call us, what do you, what do you call us? Let me give y'all a link to this video right quick that he sent me. Because he want us, he want all us to see it, and obviously they do too. Because this obviously violates the terms of service of Google. Y'all done took everything else down, but you ain't tucked this down. This is what I found very interesting. How this ain't got taken down? You took down everything else, but you know anybody else put something up, you hitting them with a strike. You taking their stuff down, but this right here. Let's look at it real quick. Look at this real quick. Let me find this video. It's called the Flow Rider. What is this? Flow Rider. Uh, where is it at? Let me find it real quick. Let 
I'm going into my history real quick. I want y'all, y'all get a chance. I want y'all to go watch this video. And I want you to tell me if this violates uh, the terms of service of YouTube. It got almost 2 million views on it. It's been up for, shoot, I don't know, almost four years, I think. I don't know if nobody reported it or not. It's even funny because you got some black people on the, in the comment section talking about, I'm a black person, and I think that this is funny. I don't really think it was a real black person said that. I couldn't see how a black person said that. It was like, it was extremely disrespectful, extremely disrespectful, extreme, extremely hate, extreme everything toward the black race. Here it is right here. Yeah, y'all call us a Shavratsa. Did I pronounce it right? No, my Yiddish is not too good. It's not too good. I ain't gonna lie. All right, let me put it in uh put it in chat. Put it in chat. Right here. There's a link right there. I want y'all to go over there. I want you to watch that video real quick. Just put it in chat. Go over there and watch that video real quick. Go ahead and watch that video. And ask why this video is still on YouTube. Ask why it's still on YouTube. Go over there and watch that video right now. They like to talk about us. Go over and watch it. Watch it right now. I want all the Jewish people watching it. You go over there and watch it too. You tell me why that's still on YouTube. It's funny, huh? That shit funny. It's hilarious. You know, let me tell you something, man. Y'all think we're not intelligent. I'm reading your stuff. Your stuff is child's play to me. I'm not impressed. The only way this stuff would have to work is you'd have to dumb people down. You'd have to make the playing field unequal. I'm just, I'm just keeping it 100. I'm keeping it a solid with you. Make the, make the playing field equal, and let's see how my people perform. Since we lazy and shiftless, and we don't do nothing. Let us stop being under your influence. If we could ever get them to do that, but some, because some of our people do, they just love being under the control and thumb of other root groups of people. Maybe we are the original Lulu Amalu. If you don't know what a Lulu Amalu is, then look it up. It's a Sumerian word. Look it up. You reported the video. I think they would use it for elevated music. The Greek Romans conquered the Egyptian Empire. The Greeks and Romans conquered it. The, there were 31 dynasties, 36 dynasties in Egypt. Which one they conquered? They, con they didn't conquer Egypt to the later dynasties. You had a pre-dynastic Egypt, and then you had a dynastic Egypt. Just saying that the Greeks conquered Egypt, that shit was like Egypt lasted 10,000 fucking years. Y'all conquered Egypt on the downcline, man. Shut the fuck up. They need to stop that stupid shit. <laughs> talking about they conquered Egypt, man. You know, you're not talking to somebody who's ignorant. You sound ignorant. I wouldn't even have said anything like that on a public space. Do you know how many scholars we have out here? How would you even say something like that without qualifying your statement? Y'all watching that video? Watch the video. Make sure you watch it now. I just want you to watch it. Because I'm wrong. Am I wrong? Just watch the video. Watch the video. Right there. How many views it got? That shit got like how many views? That shit got 4,217,609 views. And it's been on the internet since 2016. Six years. The only white dude with balls on the internet. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right, I'm just saying, you know, I'm just saying, why they, why they're still on the internet? Why they didn't get taken down? Why they didn't get taken down? 
why that didn't get taken down. I don't understand. You know, y'all mad at Kanye West. I just find it interesting. You know what I'm saying? That's that, that's just the only thing. That's all I'm saying. And how can we be? We've never, you know, black people, we ain't never lynched nobody. We ain't never um, um, done something malicious to another race of people. When we were in Egypt, we welcomed in the Greeks. We welcomed them in. They were children. We educated you, civilized you, showed you how to do magic and all, showed you architecture and showed you how to do great things and everything. And what the things that we get an individual like this saying, y'all came back later and conquered us. I always be weary of those who forfeit the focus on principle for a focus on circumstance. That's exactly correct. And that's what they do. How can you have a base? You don't have a base to operate from. You not. You don't. Your thinking is not ordered correctly. So therefore, you lack the ability to reason. You don't have good reasoning skills because you don't. All you people out there giving relationship advice, your relationship advice is worthless because you don't have a platform to operate from. You don't have a principle to operate from. When I listen to your platforms, that's what I look for. Okay, what principle do you have to operate from? And it's lacking. Okay, you sound intelligent, and you may posture yourself as intelligent because you have a lot of followers. But it's no more than the blind leading the blind. Man, my adrenaline always spikes a little when I hear Yusuf read one of my comments. <laughs> in, my, in my comprehension, the Egyptian merged with Greeks through marriage. Well, I mean, you talking about, we talking about Cleopatra and Mark Anthony. Come on, man. Look, get your time frames together. Get your time frames together. All right. Like I said, you know, Egypt had 10,000 years. You don't have anything like that in your history. These are the oldest civilizations on the planet, man. Yeah, you know, y'all watch the video. Who didn't watch the video? Watch the video. I'll put the link in there again. Let me see. That link is there again. Y'all can watch it. I want y'all to watch that video. I want you also to read the Communist Manifesto. I want you to read it. The Communist Manifesto. You need to understand what is they talking about, the bourgeois and the uh, proletariat working class and the wealthy class. Y'all ever watch this video? It's put out by a Jew. I like her. I like her. It's called Atlas Shrugged. Ayn Rand. Ayn Rand. You know, Ayn Rand, she's a bit. Now, she is an intellectual. I do I do admire Ayn Rand. Um, they, have, they even have something called Randism. She had a little philosophy and a lot of followers. And I, 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 I kind of like, you know, her way of thinking, even though she never demonstrated to me that she herself was operating from a platform that was rooted in natural law. However, I did like some of the things that she wrote. I, I love the book Atlas Shrugged. You know, Atlas holds up the world, and, you know, if Atlas Shrugged, he's getting the world off his back. And this was a statement of the wealthy to the people who bitch and complain and who are victims. Okay, since you don't like the world we built, and we'll take our world with us, and you can build your own. That that probably was, you know, the cliff notes of the movie. That's probably what it was, the thesis of, the basis of it was. All right? Thousand pay. I read the book, and I watched the movie. Both were good. The, the movie was good, and the book was excellent. If you ever get a chance to read it, I think it's over 1,100 pages, make sure you read the book. Very good book. And watch the... Um, um, the interview with Ayn Rand, uh, she has an interview on YouTube. It was a very, very good interview. Why some of the interviews with her on the internet? It was very, very good, very interesting. I, I'm the kind of person, um, yeah, I said she was Jewish. Most of them are Jewish. I'm almost everybody on TV y'all watching. What are you talking about? You know, almost all of them. 
Almost all of them. All of them. Just about, I'll say 90%, at least 90%. At least 90%. I, all of them are. You know, every time I look around, I'm Schindler, Schindler's List was put out by who? Steven Spielberg, Jewish. Won a lot of awards. Frank Wallace, the one with Frank Wallace. I think, was that Wallace, Frank Wallace? I think so. Is that why they're going to space? Now, I don't know why they're going to space, you know. I mean, every you're either growing or you're dying. Eventually, we got to go to outer space. I think the universe is meant to be colonized. That's why there's so much space out there. You know, if, why we have all this space in the universe if it's not meant for us to explore? That don't make any sense. That don't make any sense to me. That doesn't make any sense to me to have all that space out there and you not and you have curiosity. And you not want to go see what it is. You a damn fool if you don't think. Yeah, Mike Wallace. But I ain't ran. That was a good, that was a good interview. Watch that interview, her and Mike Wallace. You watched it, it wasn't for me. Okay. You got some Jews in there. We talking about Zionists now. I gotta always qualify. We talking about Zionists. I have some Jew friends. <laughs> but I do for real. I do. <laughs> But, you know, you hear that statement, you know, I like when Kanye said that, you know, he'll be I have black friends, you know, I'm not, I'm not racist. I have black friends, you know, <coughs> but the kingdom of God is within space is fake. Uh, you know, uh, you don't want to listen to none of that stuff anyway. You want to go back. If you want to get true information about the nature of reality in the universe, you got to go back to the Egyptians. Why do you think they do it? All right, what do you look inside their lodges? What do you see? You see damn pyramids, all right? What do you see on their dollar bill? You see pyramids. You don't see synagogues and stuff like that. They got pyramids and obelisks and things like that, all right? They got the eye rod. You know, they they know what it is. Come on, man. (laughs) That's why I'm giving you the seven pillars you know you got to go you got to start with the seven levels of nature communism is the elimination of private property socialism all this is government they want a bigger government they want because and they out to prove that you animals that's why they like you know you ain't got no control of your women they said well you know then they get out well you know your woman is to be controlled you know you say something like that you know she's she's not your property even though in England, women were property. You know, that's why she took your last name. She was your property. Women were property. They don't like that, but that's what it was, okay? Put a ring on your finger to evidence that fact, all right? You belong to somebody who's somebody's property, okay? But they don't like that today, all right? We live in a new time and a new age where you can run wild and run free and do what the hell you want, screw as many men as you want, and then still expect yourself to come to men and expect us to accept all that bullshit and wife you up, and it's not happening. All right, so basically you are being taught a delusion. That's something else I'm going to get into. We're going to get into some of the esoteric uh, information surrounding sex, as well as virginity and the importance of your first sexual encounter, and the reason why men, you uh, women, you are not created to be having sex with all types of men like this. And you do devalue yourself when you are uh, promiscuous and you're loose, all right, with yourself and everything. You like that. Now, some of these men don't have the heart to tell you that because they don't get any pussy or nothing like that. So they're afraid to, you know, to piss you off. So, you know, they not really a man because a real man is going to tell you what it is. And that's what it is, you know. It's not a real man. You know, you're dealing with men. When you come around men, you know, when you come around men, women, feminists are supposed to get uncomfortable because they, they can't sense that bitches. That bitchness. They got that bitch attitude in front of these dudes don't demonstrate no type of masculine tendencies. Because, you know, testosterone has been steadily steadily dropping in men due to what's being put into the food. All right, so they don't even feel nervous when they be around you. Matter of fact, you be nervous when you be around them. ridiculous <laughs> this is ridiculous this is a clown show out there right now all right let's see what we got let me let me let me take some questions in the chat real quick what we got in the chat what we got in the chat we got in the chat <laughs> yeah in the chat 
who came up with the argument that the Israelites stole from the Egyptians to write the Holy Scriptures? Wasn't the prophets inspired by Yah? Well, I don't think nobody came up with it. I think what people are seeing is that when you look at the seven tablets of creation, when you look at the Atrahasis, the Enuma Elish, the Gilgamesh epic, epics, the descent of Tammuz and Ishtar, and all those various documents, they have the same stories that in the Bible, but they precede the Bible by thousands of years. In addition to the fact that Abraham came out of Samaria. There's a connection. I'm just saying, you know, we just need an explanation of why do you have these, you have different Messiah stories in almost every culture on the planet. I mean, if you do your comparative religious study, you would find this out, you know, I mean, and then my question to you would be, where's the original Bible? Where are those original texts, those manuscripts had that they got all that stuff from? You don't have one, don't waste your time. I know that's going to piss some people off. That's going to piss you off. I know it. I know it. I'm going to get emails. There's going to be comments. You can go to put your comments in the comment section right now. I read, I read, I go through the comments. I actually read the comments. I read the comments. Some of them, even if your comment don't show up, that means it's being held for review. But you'll see later on that I'll release it. Sometimes I release comments that I don't like. I don't like the comment. I'll still release it. You know, I'll put it up there. Unless you're being too vulgar or something like that, I'll erase your comment. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to erase it. It's not going to. I don't, I don't like negativity or anything. I don't go, engage in negativity. What we're doing here today, we're just speaking facts, you know, without fear. You know, it's just facts without fear. I'm going to open up the phone lines on tomorrow. I'm just, I'm like moving my office and everything right now. But as soon as I get resituated, I'm going to put the phone lines back in. I'm going to give you a chance to call in and challenge me on some of these things I'm talking about. What we got right here? Let's see. Uh, I don't know. Can I, can I, I want to see, can I take a call right now? Hold on. Let me see if I can take a call. If I can take a call real quick. Hold on. I might can take a call. Let me see. I'll see if I can put. All right, let's see if I can let, I'm going to let somebody call in. Let me see if I'm, let me see if I can let somebody call in. I got to put these on the right speakers though. Hold on. Let me see. I'm trying to get away out and call in. I got this, uh, I forgot I got this thing right here. Hold on. Hold on, y'all. I got you. Let me try to get it where I can let y'all call in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let me see if this is the number right here. Yep. Yeah. Let me give y'all number 404-981-5332. Let me put that in the uh, chat. You can't call in. This ain't no line where you call in hold. So it's first come, first serve. You know what I'm saying? You can't be like a million people trying to call and everything. It ain't going to work. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Before you call. Wait a minute. Before you call, though. Wait, wait, wait. Before y'all call. Before y'all call. Before y'all call. Before y'all call. 
Oh, you call. Hold on. You can't call yet. Can't call yet. I gotta set it up. Hold on. All right, uh, okay, that should. Okay, that should do it. All right, that should do it. Why don't y'all try to call me now? Let's see. Somebody try to call that number. See what pop up. Wait a minute, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, y'all. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Somebody just called, but it went to the uh it went to the computer. Wait a minute, real quick. Wait a minute, real quick. All right, come on, try to call again. Let's see. Wait a minute, ain't coming up. Oh, that shit ain't coming, ain't coming up. Y'all trying to call. <laughs> Hold on, I'm trying to, uh, trying to get it to... Uh, Wait a minute, hold on. Y'all told y'all to wait. Wait a minute, man. Just wait. Stop calling. Y'all stop calling. Wait a minute. Stop calling. Stop calling. Stop calling for a second. All right. I'm a... Okay, there it is. Okay, I got it. All right. Now you can call. Now you can call. I had to figure out what was going on. Now you can call. Speaking. Call from Brian. To accept, press to send a voicemail, press two. All right. You on the air. You on the air. Call from Brian. To accept, press one to send a voicemail. Uh oh. Wait a minute, hold on, call back. <laughs> Sorry about that. Hold on, let me see what's going on. I'm, I'm messing up the, uh... All right, try it again. I didn't have my keypad. All right, call back again. Check, check. Okay. Call from. Okay, you on air? Hey, man, ain't you the coolest taking calls like this? That's pretty <laughs> awesome. I had to talk. Uh, I'm sitting I there did. working this thing, man, trying to get it to work. I had to work finally. I'm sorry, I, I, people I hung up on. <laughs> well, go ahead, man. What you got for me? Uh, I just wanted to tell you um, it's all good with you. I've been watching you a little bit lately and uh, a few times. I watch more and more of you every time I see you, and uh, just glad you got a, a nice show for us to watch. And uh, 
I've seen you out in your car a few times, you know. Very smart man. So thank you for what you do and uh, try to make it all smart. I'd like to hear more about your uh, principles. So, um, like, I try to base my, my myself on morals, but I see they change demographically, time-wise. So I, I just go on my gut, what's right or wrong. But I, I think I understand what you mean by you got to have some, some principles. You got to have some. I'd like to hear. You got to for it to be a firm foundation. It has to be something unchangeable. And the only thing unchangeable that you, that you find is in nature. So you always have to start out yeah. with everything and thought and deed with some sort of uh, principle of nature. So you start out right there. So when you start out right there, then you're able to order your thoughts properly and you can make right decisions. You have to have right knowledge, right wisdom and right understanding, you know, but the only thing that is right. Okay. They'll try to say, you know, a lot of people out there try to say something's up to opinion or that's how you think, or that's how you feel about something. And this is erroneous thinking. Everything has to have a base, some sort of baseline that it operates from. And that is what makes you an intellect. And that's what make that gives you the ability to reason well. So, you know, like, for instance, polarity. I always like to use that as an example. There are two sides to everything. As soon as you hear anyone come up and start talking about trying to make you give the impression that there are more than two genders, you automatically know that they're either a devil or somebody that's ignorant or illiterate. I don't care who they are. I don't care if they're a professor at a university or who they are. They're stupid. And you know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I love that term. <laughs> yeah, I love that term when they say I'm, um, what is that word? Non-binary. Uh, non-bi- non-binary. Non-binary. Yeah. I'm non-binary. That's uh, like, that is a direct <laughs> insult to God. That's why I'm going to tell you that's something. Binary. That's why a lot of them are atheists. A lot of those people. Anon any, yeah. huh? anything is a non anything is a binary. Yeah, yes, it is. And you know, a lot of them, a lot of them, they talk like that. They're, they're like atheists and people like that because you know, that goes against nature. It's like, what do you mean that you're non, I'm not, you, you have this binary way of thinking of two things. What do you mean? That's a principle of nature. That's how nature operates. Everything, everywhere you look around in nature, there are two sides to everything. There's nothing wrong with us. There's well, something I, wrong with you and how you're thinking. And that's yeah. what I'm saying. When you have, uh-huh. you have the, you have the right to deem someone insane because only an insane person would go against nature. That's like a person going up on top of a building trying to deny that gravity exists and you jump off. Yeah. You're insane. You can easily say whatever you want to say out of your mouth. You can go to a university and you can, uh, and you can uh, have all type of philosophy about why nature is uh, uh, gravity is just an illusion and it's not really what you think, but you're going to have to contend with nature because if you jump off the building, you're going to hit the ground. And it's the same thing with this. The human species can only propagate itself through a man and a woman. Not a woman by herself and not a man by himself. Okay? The, the male is the one that determines the uh, sex of the female. And if all you people out there who think that a woman can have a baby without a man, they have conducted research on that particular point. You can find that as, if you're a member of SBC University, you can go into the Matrix volumes by Val Valerian, and he actually has an article in there of a woman. She's still conducting this research today in Africa. Now, what has caused these births, these virgin births, as they call them, is some water that they bathe in that's causing this to happen. It just doesn't happen spontaneously, all right? But every time she has a baby, the baby is always the exact clone of the mother, and it's always female. Women cannot have male children without the presence of a man. This is why you get these, these things about the Amazons and things like that. They do have a basis in, in fact, I would actually say, but there's no men there because they can't have a man without a man. You're a very, very wise man already for years. And I appreciate you uh, letting us listen to your brain as it, as it learns like we do. I appreciate you. I appreciate you too. All right. Thank you for calling. All right. I'm going to let, Somebody else call in. Y'all keep calling while I'm talking on the phone to somebody. I'm not going to answer your call, man. Come on. Y'all got to be, use your common sense. I'm on the phone talking to somebody. You calling in on the line, trying to get in, everything. You know, I ain't going to let you in. You're on the line. You're on the line. What's on your mind? What's going on? Hey, hey, I'm to yourself. What's going on, bro? Hey, what's happening, man? What's going on? Hey, this King Stacey, man. 
Hey, King Stacy, hey, I haven't heard you a long time, brother. What's going on? Yeah, it's been a minute. It's been a minute, man. Uh, I was just touching base with you, man. Uh, you know, I, I'll be watching you, man, but I ain't been talking to you like I used to, though. Right, right, right. <laughs> right, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm around still. You know, I'm gonna be. I'm trying to be back on the earth more, more often now. You know, I'm kind of like I'm. Ha- I'm having this. Uh, I had to get out of my rut. You know, I was in. I had to move and do some things and uh, get me some new energy, man. You know, give me some new energy. You know, <laughs> I, I was my energy around me was becoming stagnant. You know, sometimes we just got mm-hmm. to move. You know, and I got to move somewhere and just go somewhere else. And you know, and that's what I decided to do. But anyway, what's been up with you, man? Okay. Oh uh, no, man. You know, I got my business open now. You know, doing my thing. That's great. Contracting for this new company. That's great. Say That's that great. again. That's great. Oh, yeah. That's oh, great, yeah. brother. That's great. That's great. That's great. You ain't got no question for me, man. I got to ask these questions, though, now. These people calling me. I got to let them call in. Oh, okay. 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 I just wanted to say one thing to your audience, man. Go ahead. Okay. Y'all listen. Y'all listen to everything this guy say. When he say read, y'all ass get up and read. Don't listen to nobody. Go do it. I did it. Remember the first time I talked to you yourself? That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yep. <laughs> man. That's right. That's hey, right. Everything is good, man. Reading is, you, fun. You did, you did. reading is fundamental. It's the key to everything. You know, you got to read, man. You got to read. Yeah, you do. You got to study do. history, too, especially as it relates to subjects like this. You got to, I yeah, gave y'all some good books to read. But anyway, brother, let me catch this next call. Thank you for calling in, okay? Okay, all right, you on the line. What's going on? Call from Bravo. All right, you on the line. What's going on? You on the air? Oh, yeah. Can you, can you hear me, brother? Yeah, loud and clear. What's going on? All right. Uh, first, I want to say uh, I, I peeped the uh, Cowboys flag in the truck the other day. <laughs> That's what's up. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a natural Texan, so big up. <laughs> me um, too. <laughs> Me too. My, my question was in regards of uh, two things. The first one was the uh, IBOE. Um, most people probably don't know what that is, but me, me, me and you on the same tune, right. in tune with that. Uh-huh. Uh, have you ever utilized that in any, any any procedure or process you have ever done? And all my processes I've ever done, that's what I've used. It comes off the okay. Unicentral Convention, the first seven articles of that document, instruct you on how to put one of those things together. But yes, on everything that I've done, because it's called the IBOE is an international bill of exchange. And the reason it's an international, because you're foreign to the jurisdiction of the United States. The jurisdiction of the United States in which the Federal Reserve operates in is a territorial jurisdiction. This is why the Federal Reserve is constitutional. A lot of people say, well, the, uh, the Federal Reserve is unconstitutional. That's not true. Okay, the Federal Reserve falls under the plenary power doctrine. The Federal Reserve Act is something that was instituted by Congress. Okay, under their plenary power doctrine. So they keep that within a territorial jurisdiction, and then they give you a membership card into that territorial jurisdiction called a social security number. Okay, that evidences that you're a U.S. citizen. You got to be a member of that jurisdiction to operate in that jurisdiction. That's why they require it for anything that you do to utilize within that jurisdiction. You have to have a social security number. You got to have a social security number to do anything within their jurisdiction to get a benefit and a privilege from them. So it's so the Federal Reserve operates in that. And so when we you when we do a secure party process, what we do first before you start uttering instrument instruments within that jurisdiction, which is a private jurisdiction, you have to get permission from them. That is the reason you do the first step where you write them and you correspond with them first. This is also to avoid any allegations of mens rea or criminal intent. No one can say that you intended to do any type of criminal act if you gave somebody a heads up before you even got into it. Wouldn't you agree with that? Wouldn't you agree with that? That's a fact. Okay. So I'm giving notice. This is under UCC 1-202. So I'm giving all these people a notice first. And in giving them a notice and allowing them an opportunity to respond or rebut to my actions. Okay. And then giving them another. Are you giving them 60 days total? All right. Which is reasonable. That's a reasonable time. You're sending it certified or registered mail with return receipt requested. You're doing all of these things. You're taking all these steps necessary to let these people know that we understand that the Federal Reserve is a private bank. All right? It is not a governmental institution. 
We understand that the right to create negotiable instruments resides with the people, not with the government. Anybody can write negotiable instruments. What you cannot do is you cannot use anything from the public to, uh, to utilize those negotiable instruments, such as the American Banking Association, the ABA, like the routing numbers that are at the bottom of these, uh, these instruments and things like that. Those are to route their instruments. You don't need them anyway because our, we route our instruments through, the, uh, through registered mail. The six digits on a registered mail number is the same as a QSIM number, okay, a domestic QSIM number. You have an ISIN number. You have a QSA number, domestic and international. It went one is nine and one is six. All right. When we send out instruments through the mail in the United States of America, you do it through registered mail. That tracking number allows who you to know who is in, who's the holder of that instrument. The holder of that instrument, if they choose to retain it, has agreed to follow the tenor of that document which makes it a trust relationship. And that's why they call it a, a UCC contract trust account. You don't have a secret account that you're drawing from. You're drawing from the credits that are on that bond that is on deposit with the Treasury Department. And if you're a Treasury official listening to me, you know I'm telling the truth. You're the holder of that document, not the holder in due course. The reason you're not the holder in due course is because we have a maturity date on there and we have instructions for you to send it back at the end of 30 years. Cool, cool, cool. Everything, everything so, that's being drawn from that bond, and that's why you're using the IBOE. IBOE is a three-party instrument. So in order to use a bill of exchange, you have to have something to draw off of. And what's being drawn off of the credits on the bond that we submitted to the Treasury Department through registered mail. Check, check, check. Okay, there we go. All right, I'm back. 
Sorry about that, y'all. I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's happening with that. It's probably my equipment, though. I ain't going to lie. It's probably my equipment. Probably time for me to buy some new equipment. We're getting into something serious. Probably time for me to buy some new equipment, you know, because I have had this equipment for a very long time. So I think I'm going to go out and invest in me some all new stuff and, you know, just do that. But anyway, all right, where were we? Where were we? Go ahead and ask your next question. <laughs> um. How, how do I actually get in touch with you? I know uh, some of your mentors I, I've been studying as well, such as Patrick Devine and uh, Keir, uh, uh, King. Um, but I, I wanted to be able to reach out to you. What uh, way would I go out to do? Well, I mean, you know, I do consultations. My con- You can cash app me at cash app is Yusuf L19. Yusuf L19 is $250 an hour. Um, that's the best way to reach me. Or you can come to our classes at night, Monday through Thursday at SBC University. And, in, and you know, we have live classes. We show all this stuff, and you can ask questions there. You know, I have a question and answer going on right there. You know, that probably would be a, a, a more inexpensive way, um, you know, to access me is going through the route of being a member of SBC University. You know, so it's $119 a month. You can cancel anytime you want. What I say, and I just added a whole bunch of new stuff to the site. Also, I want people to understand something. First of all, you know, you need to know where the download section. If you're a member, go to the where it's click on where it says classroom. Okay, don't ask me how to you know you join the webinar. It says right here live webinars. It's right here live webinar, and then we have a download section. The download section is probably going to be that's the section I teach from because that's where all the documents that I utilize to teach are located. So it's a lot of different documents on the download section. The download section is what I stay on because if I'm referencing something, I have easy access to the document on that particular site. And I've probably uploaded probably almost 420 documents right there. So make sure that if you are interested in all the secure party documents on there, all your trust documents on there, I spent a great deal of time making sure it's organized very nicely and that you have access to all the information that you need. Remember, it is the classroom section and everything. That's your whole panel that you operate from and everything. And then on the download section and to attend the webinar, all you have to do is click on it and then register for the day that you in question that you want to attend. It's Monday through Thursday, 9 to 11 p.m. All right. All right. But I got one more question. I'm done. Uh, what, is, what is your opinion on the injunction? Well, injunction is a, 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 a an injunction is like a restraining order, you know, on and in uh, on like an individual. And it's usually issued by a court. I know there are individuals out there they have they have they have a process they they call an injunction. But in my opinion, it's just a name they put on it because it involves the same process that everybody else uses, which is giving notices to individuals and telling them what the result will be and if they can and they tend to keep pursuing that particular action. They just call it an injunction, but it's the same thing. They're giving names to stuff that is the same stuff. It's the same. Man, listen, man, all this stuff is based off the same principle. It's based off notice. Uh, you can't do in, take any action against anyone if you haven't given them notice. You know, p- that's why people get in trouble, and they don't, document, they don't document the fact that they've given notice. So a lot of people will try to put liens on people. They'll just cuss them out. Then the next thing you know, they're putting a lien on them. No, you got to give, you got to give, uh, it, this is an equitable remedy, and you got to give property notice. In order to receive equity, you got to give equity, and you have to do everything with good faith and in clean hands. And you got to be able to document that and prove that on the record. And that's not operating in good faith and clean hands when you give somebody enough notice of, of the action that you intended to take. So all the processes follow that. I don't care what pro- I don't care what name they give it. I these just like a trust. They call all kind of trust. You know, we have the the. Uh, the, the common law trust, the constitutional trust, the pure trust, the business trust, the, the land holding trust, uh, the, the incredible trust from another world that you don't have to pay no taxes trust. But they all trust. And all trusts have a settler, grantor, creator, trustor, all meaning the same thing, the person that creates the trust. They all have a uh, trustee. They all have a corpus or a raise in the trust. They all have beneficiaries. You get whatever name you want to, but they, that, they still trust. So you can give these processes whatever name you want to, but they still have all the same elements within them. They have to. Because the government is operating off of a presumption, assumption, and color of law. 
And in order to, to kill an assumption or a presumption, you got to rebut it. You can only be rebut a presumption with a fact and facts or stipulations or agreements in law. I don't care what name you put on it. It's all the same stuff. Does that all answer right. your question? Appreciate it, bro. You're welcome. All right, y'all. Appreciate it. All right, got I'm gonna take another call. Another call. Phone lines open. Y'all forgot what the phone number is, huh? Phone number is what is it? Four four nine eight one five three three two. Call from the Mitch. You on the line? What's on yeah. your mind? What up, big fella? Um, what's going on? Hey, um, you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. Okay, uh, when you file a claim, uh, does it matter the type? Um, hello? I'm here, I'm listening. Okay, um, does it matter the type of, uh, uh, bill that you create in terms of uh, equity, um, like a, a bill of equity or in REM or in personam, let's say, if the Richmond County um, uh, record my documents, I would probably pursue it in equity. Yeah, you're going to pursue it. It's an equitable remedy. That's what it is. But if you're talking about in REM means against a thing and in personam means against a person. You know, that's an argument. You have to study, you know, I had to study admiralty to get that most proceedings in admiralty are in rim. They're in rim, which means against a thing. Uh, but they have been known to be in personam as well. Um, we're dealing with legal fiction entities. So it's a, and you know, if, if it's going to be in the person of a thing that it depends on if you're trying to attack an individual or it's against the state, you know, usually it's going to be some sort of in rim action that you're doing. These are admiralty terms that you're utilizing uh, because it's an admiralty jurisdiction, which is civil in nature. Uh, it's civil in nature, which means, which means it's about money. But if you're going to do a bill in equity, it's going to be an interim proceeding. That would be my, you know, my take on it. But there's been some... Okay, dis- so I was, Go ahead. I was thinking about compelling performance. So by compelling the performance... If you got to compel performance. To if, if, you're only going to compel performance if there's some sort of contract because that's what equity does, compels the performance. And for there to be a contract, um, rights can only be rights can only be enforced through contracts. So if there's some sort of contract, there, then you have to do some sort of administrative process. Okay. Um. In terms of them being a trustee, let's say they're public servants. Um. There's somewhat a quasi like is there some type of contract that they would be obliged to perform? What contract? Like the contract of me being, uh, I guess, a part of their jurisdiction and filing my form. It's also in their state code where um, they are supposed to record my documents, but they're refusing to do so. I've never had I've never had anybody public refuse to record my documents. That's because I record my documents in the right place and I always present them to the clerk in the correct form. There's a reason. I'll give you then, a, I'll give you a simple example. One time I did go into court. One time. And we were doing deed acknowledgments um, where we were doing accept the deeds and become the owner. And we were, we went into court and Rob Ryder, if y'all wondered who did it, it was, it was back in 2010, Rob Ryder, he came out would accept the deed and become the owner. And we were doing that and we went into court and, and it had these four documents that we had to submit uh, to the clerk and the real estate records. And one time a clerk wouldn't accept my documents. And I was like, you know, and I was dressed up. I was suited and booted. She thought I was an attorney. That's how professional I came at her. And um, she said, I can't accept those. And she handed them back to me. And I said, why can't you accept them? And she said, I can't give you legal advice. I said, I'll tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and and try to do the corrections to these documents. But when I come out back, I want your oath of office and your bond. And I'm going to report you to risk management. And she told me, hold on, sir. Hold on, hold on. Give me the documents. She, she put them in the right order and took them. She said, you have to give me the documents in the right order. It could be something as simple as that, that you didn't give her the documents in the right order. The clerks go by form. They don't go by substance. The substance part of it is for the court to decide. 
the clerk is not there to make a legal determination on uh, on your document. She's just looking at the form. So if you're filing something in court, it would be wise to have the caption of the pleading correctly that matches the jurisdiction that you're in. It would be wise for it to be signed properly. It would be wise also that if you're filing it for to, for someone else, that person's signature is notarized. Okay, these are some of the things that you need to understand and do. Okay, they do have rules of court. Okay, they got rules. They follow the rules. I have never had that happen to me. In the county, do they have these rules published or posted? Yes, they do have it. Yeah, every every yes, they do. Every county, every county has their rules published. If you go down to the every courthouse has a local law a library within that courthouse. Go in that courthouse and go to that uh, law library and ask them for the rules of court for that particular court. Well, well, not really the court, but the county for recording, um, like rules for the county recording. The county recording is there. Is there in the uh, well, the county recorder? You can ask them for yeah, for uh, for what their their uh, uh, their pro- their policies are as far as for the filing. They're provided for you. Everything they do has to be according to some sort of statute, rule, or regulation. You know, the the legislature makes laws, and then the uh, administrators they make rules. I right, to um to govern the individual agencies in the performance of trying to, you know, perform to those laws for the legislature. So, okay, yeah. The you magistrate know. of the county is, is the clerk of, uh, is also, uh, is, is the judiciary or is the administrative? It's administrative. It, it, mo- most of these courts are administrative courts. They're not judicial courts. Judicial well, courts are Article 3. The himself is, uh, is administrative. Say what now? The, the, the county clerk himself, the, I guess the magistrate, he calls himself a magistrate. That, that would be the magistrate is not or, the magistrate is not the county clerk. The clerk does one person clerk, and then there are other clerks who are deputy clerks. Just like you have a, one sheriff and you have deputy sheriffs. It's the same thing with the clerk. You have one clerk and she deputizes other clerks, and you have one sheriff he deputizes all the other sheriffs. Okay. Um, uh, uh, where did you read about clerks and deputization and? You share that PDF? I don't need a PDF on that. That should be common sense. That's how it is in every county. What are you talking about? I got to read everything uh, on that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I got to show you I read everything on that. That should be common sense. That's no. a county clerk. You, you got one clerk. Uh, go in the county and li- who's the clerk? Go on the website. It's one clerk. What are you talking about? There's assistant clerks. You know what I'm saying? Just make things hard. Anything. Hey, wait, let me put it like this. You know what? You don't want to know where that comes from? That comes from delegation of powers doctrine. I'll give you the doctrine behind it. It's called delegation of powers doctrine. All right, you can delegate your powers to other individuals like the legislature. They delegate a portion of their powers to the executive agencies. They can't delegate lawmaking powers to the executive agencies, but they delegate a portion of their power as well as the fact that they delegate a portion of their powers to the judicial branch. That's why you have an Article Three judge sitting in an Article One court or acting in a appellate capacity for an administrative court. You will have Article Three judges in there. It's called de- you can okay, Google well, it right now. They got all kind of stuff written on it. They got a ton of stuff. Yeah, just put it in Google. Just to go back, uh, when you threatened to uh, use her bond, um, why would she give you give you her bond? When you I don't know. It? I don't know. I saw. I'm just telling you what I said. I don't know why she did what she did. I just said something. I know no, the, but, I know uh, the like, bonds are held with the risk management department of that municipality, and nobody can work in the gotcha. public without having a bond or some sort of oath to uh, to adhere to the Constitution of the United States of America. Okay, so you want like insur- insurance of the state? That's what, exactly so what it is. is, insurance. Okay, okay, that's amazing. All right, I'll let other callers get in there. Thank you so much for taking me. Okay, thank you. All right. Why are you calling me? I'm talking on the phone to somebody. You got, you know, it's people y'all don't exercise like common sense. I'm on the phone, man. Wait for me to get off the phone and then call. You know what I'm saying? Why are you calling? I'm on the phone. Now I'm off the phone and you can call. You know, you can call now. You can call. Phone lines are open. There's the phone right there. Check, check, check. There you go. Call. All right, you're on the line. What's on your mind? Hey, you, sir. How you doing, brother? I'm doing all right. What's happening? Man, I need uh, some direction on where can I obtain the reading material about processing instructions to, for set-off as well as, you know, uh, how to draft my own set-off. You can go on. You can go, on you can go on. Uh, 
on uh, SBC University, and you go into the yes, class, sir. you know, in the classroom section on downloads, in the section called discharge debt discharge. There is a document called huh. using a bill of exchange to discharge debt. You can, Mike, can Google it on the internet and see if it pop up too. Using a bill of exchange, I, use a bill of exchange to discharge debt. In that document, they have an excellent example of processing instructions for international bill of exchange. They even have a copy of a bill. Of, that's one of the best documents on the internet, in my opinion. I have that. I had that, but my my um. My confusion is I want to be able to understand everything that's in the uh, in the document, so I'm trying to read up on it. Okay, well, if you want to understand everything in the document, then let's start with looking up every word you don't know the meaning of. That's what I do. Right. Yeah, yeah I know that part. I, I got that part down. It's just I'm talking about for the, uh, you know, their statues or, or whatnot. These are not statues. This is not according to statutes. This is a private process. This don't have nothing to do with a statute. This is all been dealing with contracts. Everything on the private okay. side is dealing with contracts. It not have anything to do with statutes. This is a private process. Nothing okay, to do with statutes. You. Nothing. Yes, sir. Oh. <laughs> this is about agreements. Okay, so the, this is called negotiable okay, instruments. So, this is about agreements. Oh. Negotiable okay. instruments are contracts. They're contracts. Right. Exactly. I, I understand that part. Yeah, okay. I mean, I understand that part. Okay, well, then, yeah, not, then do you understand the difference between public and private? That'd be my next. Yes, question. sir. Yes, sir. I've been. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I've been. Right. Yeah, I've been following you for a minute, and okay. also I do my due diligence and research. So I'm. A, I'm. A, I'm. A, I'm. A, I'm abreast uh, mostly everything. Okay. But I'm just trying to. I'm stuck on the processing instructions. I need to do the uh, administrative process with the um, with the treasury. Um, I filed some UCC ones. So. I'm just trying to connect the dots with the process and instructions. That's well, the point you know, I'm trying to, you can make up your own, you know, as long as, you know, the principle behind it is this. You have a prearrangement with the Treasury Department. That's the whole purpose of you on an SBC process. We're starting right there. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to have something to draw off of, okay? And then you have gotcha. to have some yeah. sort of fiduciary uh, that will follow your instructions, mm-hmm. and they have to have some basis for the following of the instructions, which is HCR 192 of June 5th, 1933. All right? Yeah. So, and they have to have some agreement with them first. And then the next thing, so once we have that, okay, now we can issue negotiable instruments and then, you know, discharge debt. But it's only for that purpose. This is not for the purpose of making purchases or anything like that. It's not for that purpose. It's solely for the purpose no, of honoring ACL 192 exactly. or June. How can, let me speak to everybody exactly. out there. How are you going to pay for something with, uh, with, with promises to pay? Pull out, a, pull out a Federal Reserve note out of your pocket and look at it. I want people to understand what I'm saying. It is a promise to pay. How can you pay for something with a promise to pay? How can you pay for something with a promise to pay? How can you pay for something with a promise to pay? How can you pay for something with a promise to pay? How can you pay for something with a promise to pay? You can't. You don't have nothing. Common sense. Everybody's afraid of common sense, though. They're afraid of it. Yeah, uh, afraid of it. Like, damn, it makes too much sense. It got to be something wrong with it. Yeah, you don't have nothing to pay with. That's why it's a promise, <laughs> right? Promise, it's a promise later. You can offset debt with other debt. You can offset. That's why we're doing offset and set offs. If I owe you a hundred dollars right. and you owe me a hundred dollars, that's called a set off. We just set off the debt and zero out the account. That's all they're doing right. out in the public is zeroing out accounts, setting off debt with other debt. It's, that's why it's called money of so, account. It's accounting. So what about? <laughs> it's so, accounting. So, uh, use it. All right, go ahead. So use it. So what about what about the um, the instructions for is going through the uh, the Fed wire, the the uh, the window and stuff like that? As well, the you tell them they get, you get you tell them how to correspond with the Treasury Department. That's what they do. They do it through Fed wire. Those instructions are also if you get the IRS manual, okay, and, and the employee yeah. manual. Look at that. That's the same thing they instruct the IRS employees to do. It tells them what to do when okay. they get an international bill of exchange. They supposed to send it to fifty five, uh, send it to uh, fifteen hundred Pennsylvania Avenue in Washington D.C. All right to the Treasury. Okay, Department. okay, that got you. That's where I can get that from. Okay, now because I've been reading the uh, statement of financial account standards uh, number one forty, um, accounting and transfers and servicing of financial assets and extinguishments of uh, liability. So I'm trying that's to you know, connect all the dots. That's a good one yeah, to read. Yeah, that's what I've been reading. 
Yeah, that's, that's what I've been reading. Gene Keaton is the one put that information out. Statement 95 and that one right there, 144. Was it 140? What is it? I'm uh, on. 140. I'm, yeah, 140. That's why I'm saying I'm on you, brother. That, yeah, I'm on you, brother. Those the accounting <laughs> instructions, the Financial Standards Accounting Board. <laughs> All right, it's accounting. That's why I'm trying to do my due diligence. Yeah. Exactly. Everything is accounting. Everything is account. There is no money. There is no money. Right. There is no money. There's only credit. And to have credit, there has to be somebody capable of performing labor. And then for and then for them to be some sort of collateral, there has to be some sort of interest in a thing. This is what. The, so what we're doing is everything is about value. Value is obtained in today's money through having an interest in something. And then having a contract with somebody requiring them to perform on that contract, namely labor, go Correct. to work. Right. Yes, sir. But I'm going uh, to let it, anybody else want to ask a question, brother, but I appreciate it. So I'm going to go to the IRS manual and, and get those instructions for the Fed wire, and I'm going to continue to read that accounting. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. All right, what we got here? Okay, y'all, what time is it? I've been on there a long time. I think I might take one more call. Cargo fact for the goods. Check, 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 check. Let me go. Let me just look through the water for a minute. Okay, it says, so if the Egyptian text, love, I got to answer this. So if the Egyptian text predates the Holy Scriptures, why do government workers swear an oath of office on the Holy Scriptures? Why not the Egyptian text? Oh, I, oh, I got a better question for you. I got a better question for you. I got a better question for you. We only had to go there. We only had to go there. Let's go to Matthew. Chapter 5, verse 34. But I tell you, do not swear an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is God's throne, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make even one hair white or black. All you need is to simply say yes or no. Anything beyond that comes from the evil one. So my question to you is, why are they swearing? Why are they swearing on the Bible? Call why are they swearing on the why are they swearing on the Bible and in the Bible it tells you not to swear on it. Why are you swearing on the very book that tells you not to swear off of? Right, can you turn your computer down in the back, please? Turn your computer down in the back. You're on the air. Turn, turn your computer down. All right, you're on the air. Oh, hi, you, Super Salam. Okay, how you doing? I'm fine. How are you? I'm all right. I'm right. What's going on? I was wondering if you would pontificate on the concept of status correction. There's a lot of people who are out there thinking that they can turn themselves into American nationals when uh, the term national and citizen are synonymous. What you've thought about that whole idea of correcting your status. All right. I didn't, I didn't ever like the word correcting status i never liked i, I never li i never liked that word um correcting the status because i i don't think your status needs to be corrected you always have to correct status because everything in the public is a legal fiction entity so i think the only thing you need to correct is your way of thinking that's what i think you need to correct all right the republic is just a house no one lives in all right the democracy would not exist without the republic because the word democracy is not even anywhere in the constitution for the united states of america it's not in there anywhere. All right, so correcting your status is simply a method of understanding who you are in relation to the government and then giving them notice of that fact. The government operates off of what is called uh, presumptions, assumptions, and color of law. They have a right to do that. They're presuming things about you because you have been voluntarily receiving benefits and privileges from them on every document that you've ever signed where they ask you, are you a U.S. citizen? You check the box that said, yes, I'm a U.S. citizen. A U.S. citizen is a congressionally created citizenship. It's a federal citizenship all right? that evidences that you are some sort of franchise of the corporate United States that resides within that 10 mile square in Washington, D.C., 
I don't use the word status correction. I tell people to privatize themselves. That's the, t- that's the term I use. I, the word sovereign is not in the Constitution. Status is not in the Constitution. None of those words in the Constitution. But what is in the Constitution is the word private because there's only a public and private. And everybody in the public understands that when I say that. That's one word they will not come, uh, come up against. Yeah, they'll try to call you a sovereign citizen, a national, you, you all those words. I don't care about all those words. They're public and private. You're, a private Amer- you're either a private American citizen, you're either in the private or the public. That's it. All law is either public or private. Public law is constitutional law, administrative law, tax law, um, criminal law, public international law, all that's in the public. In the private, you've got property law, uh, uh, property law, contract law, status law, family law, tort law, private international law, all that's on the private side. Contract is what governs the private. The Constitution governs the public. All interaction between human beings is contractual in nature. Your first contract is with God. You call it a covenant. Your second contract is with your wife. It's a marriage contract. It's contracts that you engage in on the private side. Okay. All right. Uh, So that's just what it is. So all you're doing is status correction is you informing the government uh, that you're no longer choosing to use the benefits and privileges that they are dispensing because it doesn't matter how you correct your status. As long as you keep on utilizing the things that they give you, it doesn't matter what you put on on a piece of paper because the government goes off of substance versus form. Right. I agree with you a hundred percent on everything you said. Now the question is, you got people, for example, who paid into Social Security all their lives, and they still want to collect those benefits. Can they can they be private and in the republic and declare that they don't want to receive the benefits anymore, but still collect on the Social Security that they paid into? You know, there's a guy, his name is, uh, he put out a video called The uh, Secrets of the Elite. Um, what's his name? Um, and on his, vi- on his video... He said very clearly he don't want nothing from the government. He don't want Social Security anything. First of all, Social Security is called a war contribution. I want y'all to look up the word war contribution. All right, war contribution contribution is shortened to the word contribution. Okay, it's a benefit and a privilege. It is not a right to receive Social Security. That is not a right. That's not a right. I, I'm not living. It's not really a contract and it's not really insurance. It's really, you're just giving a gift to the government. It is a gift to the government. That's why they raid it and take it whenever they want to. It's called a war contribution. That's what it is. And people have a misconception about social security and social security. Most of us, by the time we die, it's not going to be anything in social security anyway. By the time I die, there won't be any social security. I'm not living my life. Let me tell you something. I'm not living my life with some sort of expectation of receiving a handout from the government. I'm not. You need to change your thinking. You need to change right. your thinking, man. You need to stand up. Stand up. Okay, and understand what it means to be free. What it means to be free is you are responsible for your health. You're responsible for the education of your children. You're responsible for the welfare of your family. If you are a husband, you're responsible for taking care of your wife. Yes, that is our job. She's not, she's not here to take care of you. She's not, she's not, we're men. Right. So now the next question is, you know, you you notify the government. Get off your knees. Right. I I agree with you. I agree with you. So my next question is you gotta, you know, you you send a notice to the government, you let them know, you know, I'm not going to be using the government benefits and privileges and all that. But you know, when it comes to being on the road, if you don't have a license to drive, which you've got to submit, at least here in California, and probably many other states, a social security number in order to get one, what's the solution to that? You know, that was the whole thing behind the uh, the, the secure party process. You know, when I first got into this, I didn't, I wasn't on the street. So I wasn't, because um, I learned a lot of this when I went to jail. So when I got free and I was on the street, I started running into all these groups, Tony King and um, who's the other guy who did Restore America, uh, uh, Tim Turner, um, who were some of the other cats back then. And then there were these right to travel people and things like that. And I had studied right to travel a lot as well, okay, that because the uh, driver's license, yes, it is 100%. It is for com- commerce. Everything they do is commercial in nature. 
327 CFR mm-hmm. 72.11. That's why I've started off this show talking about Article 1, Section 8, Clause 3, which is the Commerce Clause. If you get anybody's indictment, you're going to see right there in the indictment the jurisdictional element that gives them jurisdiction over it. They're going to say you violated interstate commerce. There's a reason they put that phrase in there. It's almost in every indictment I read. I, it's inter, this is congressional. That lets you know it's an Article 1 court. It's commercial in nature. Everything is commercial. Everything is commerce that they deal with. Everything right. is commerce. All right, so they changed everything into some sort of commercial type of activity for profit or gain. Driving is a commercial activity. You have a taxi driver, bus driver, right. limousine driver, you know, whatever, you know, truck driver. Okay, uh, Uber driver. You know what I'm saying? These are these are these are drivers. These are people who are using the public highways for private profit and gain. Okay, that's the activity. If you're not using the roadways for that, but let me just say this. There is a presumption that they rightly so that you are because in any kind of way, if you have a bank account, if you have Federal Reserve notes in your pocket, okay, in any kind of way, they have a right to presume that you're a merchant. All of this is some sort of presumption that you're a merchant at law, that you're engaged in commerce. When you deal in Federal Reserve notes, that's you. you are, they have a right to presume that you're an expert in negotiable instruments. It's a presumption. All right, now, if you want to kill the presumption, okay, with the secure party process, we don't get into those discussions. Because, number one, you're trying to get into an argument with a police officer on the side of the road. You're putting yourself in jeopardy of getting shot down. Okay, because these people are not trained in this type of information. In addition to the fact they're being taught before they get sent out in the street, watch out for those crazy-ass sovereign citizens that don't think they have to be under any law. This is what they're telling them. They're tell, actively telling them people who they are here to serve, who the American people who are sovereign, okay, tell, they get telling public servants to come at the people who they serve and tell them that they can't, they're trying to dictate to them what their status is. Right. So, so I've been thinking about this for a long time. Wait a minute, let me finish. Been, let me finish. I'm going to let you okay, speak. Go. There is a document that addresses it. That is the uh, Affidavit of Sovereignty. You're talking about a minimum contact. For you to understand this, you gotta you got to study minimum contacts. That's the whole right. key to this. It's called minimum contacts. So there is, you have to rebut the presumption, and that you give them notice. Hey, the only reason I'm using a driver's license, this driver's license does not in any way constitute and I'll allow you to have some sort of presumption that me getting a driver's license, in effect, puts me in a, a, gives you some sort of broad sweeping authority that I'm subject to all these different statutes. Because I only went and got a driver's license to operate a motor vehicle. That's it. So I won't get molested as I egress back and forth on these public roadways due to the lack of education of your public servants. Right. So well, go ahead. So I'm. Thank you. So I'm, I'm totally, I want to be completely independent. You know, I want to live the whole idea of not taking any benefits and benefits or privileges for them. So my idea was to, uh, through an administrative process, get the state in contract through the secretary of state by notifying them that this is who I am. This is the ID that I've made for myself. And these are the numbers. This is the identification I'm going to put on my automobile and it's up to you now to promulgate this information to the rest, you know, to all your state agents and police uh, uh, officers and sheriff's departments, all law enforcement, yes. that this is who I am so that, uh, you know, if they come in contact with me, they know that I, I am not taking a benefit or privilege I'm or I'm not like driving. This. I'm, I'm going to tell you like this. Uh, this is what I heard, and I, and I believe this wholeheartedly. I heard when you do stuff like this, they watch you for three years, two to three years. All right, because they're going to see if you're going to use that social security number for anything. If you ever watch a court proceeding where people like Moore's in court and people like that who come into the courtroom and you start like talking about this stuff, the judge will hit you with, sir, where do you work at? It seems like an innocuous question, but a judge right. doesn't ever ask you an innocuous. A, there's a point to everything that comes out of their mouth. And that's to establish, in fact, whether you are a receiver of benefits and privileges from the state. All right, so they'll take silent judicial notice of that fact and ignore whatever it is that you're saying. So they have everything about you up there on the record. So people got to understand you got to put your mouth, you got to put your money where your mouth is when you do this type of information. This is why I teach people that 
you know, the, the biggest thing that the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers operate off of is own nothing but control everything. It's not about ownership. It's about control. So you got to put yourself in understanding how to use these corporations, know how to use these trusts, and operate your commercial activities in the public through those things, not through your social security number. The social security number is the nexus that tethers you to their system. You got to get rid of that. Everything is about getting rid of that. Whether you're using a CPN, that's why they don't like CPN numbers. People have a right to use a CPN number. They don't have a right to steal somebody else's identity. And, but, and that's what, when you read these articles on the internet, that's what they'll try to tell you. They'll try to give you the impression that the only people using CPN numbers are stealing the identities of babies or criminals in jail or something like old people who have passed away and things like that. And that's just not true. That's just not true. A person who, uh, who puts together a CPN, they go to great lengths to ensure that's a clean number that's not associated with anyone. This is why people are using CPN numbers from EIN numbers. You're going to the IRS and incorporating your name and then going to get in a credit file using that. That was the original way it was done. That's the original way I did it. That's the original way it was done. It was a number from the IRS. So, you know, these things these people are saying on here, I all this is geared toward you utilize your car should not be in your name. It should be in your corporation name. Everything is in a corporate is a corporate entity. It's a corporate entity. They are presuming you are a corporate entity. There's a presumption. That's why they have something called an affidavit of denial. They got an affidavit of corporate existence. That comes out of Louisiana. That's a Louisiana <laughs> statute. I give you the research that somebody did. It's right here. It's called Louisiana um, Affidavit of Denial of Corporate. Existence, Louisiana. Wait a minute, hold on. Affidavit. Wait a minute, I'm doing an affidavit. Well, isn't that isn't it that people try to put together a uh, affidavit of non corporate existence or something like that? Yeah, affidavit of non of non corporate existence. Yeah, of non corporate existence. Yeah, that's way. That's another way of saying it. Corporate. That come out of. I'm trying my. Uh, that comes out of Louisiana. The researcher who found that corporate existence is uh, see corporate existence presumed unless affidavit of denial filed. Corporate existence presumed unless and that's uh. Louisiana laws, Title 15, this is in criminal procedure, RS 15, 429, corporate existence presumed unless affidavit of denial filed before trial. Let me put the link in the chat. See, I have the link in the chat. Well, that's interesting. Well, that's where it came from. So that principle is an operation in all 50 states. There's a principle that there's a presumption that you're a corporate entity. That's what I love about right. studying different states. Some states are more transparent than others. Georgia's transparent in a lot of things. And so, you know, you got to look at these different laws in different states, and you'll see. That's what it, and this is their criminal code. It's the criminal laws. This criminal code. Just like in OCGA 1711-1 and OCGA 1711-4, about, you know, when All they right. find you uh, convicted of a crime, they put a lien on you. And then they want these attorneys want to walk around and act like the UCC don't have any application of it. When a lien is evidence of a debt, and a debt, evidence of a debt, means there's a creditor and debtor relationship that's been created, which means Title 18 applies, which is creditor and debtor relations. Yeah. Very good. Well, uh, thank you for all that, Yusuf. I just want to tell you, I really appreciate you. I've been listening to you for a long time now, and I consider you probably the preeminent teacher of this kind of stuff uh, anywhere. And I recommend you to a lot of people. I always appreciate when your live streams come on. I appreciate being able to talk to you. And I got one last question for you. Uh -huh. I host a weekly uh, meeting on uh, Tuesday nights via Zoom where we discuss law and court procedure and uh, self-determination. I was wondering if I could get you to be a guest on the show. Yeah, sure. Sure. Send me an invite. Send me an invite. I I'll be more than happy to. All right. How would I uh, get a hold of you? Uh, uh, email me at... Uh... Let me put it, let me, let me see. Leave me a message on the website. Go to the, uh, on the website and leave a message. Oh, okay. There's a way for me to just go there and yeah, just leave a message on my website and I will get it right. or, or go to my, my Instagram. My Instagram is, oh, I don't have Inst you have Instagram? I don't have Instagram. You don't have Instagram. Uh, you have Facebook? Uh, I do have Facebook. 
Uh, DM me on Facebook. My name is, my Facebook is, I have got about a million people coming to my Facebook now. Uh, where's my Facebook page at? My Facebook, if you go, if you search me on Facebook, my face, it's just use of L, but my Facebook handle is HFRNGMG. That's the, in the link. If you put it in uh, facebook.com forward slash HFRNGMG, that'll give you, uh, give you as use of L. HFRN GMG. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's my Facebook. Mail, right? Yeah, so it's Facebook.com forward slash HFRN GMG. And you'll see right. you'll see me on there. You can, you know, hit me up on there, all right? And I got you. I really appreciate it. I'm I'm, I'm Salam Abraham, so that's what I'll be messaging you for. All right. I appreciate it. Thank you, Jesus. Appreciate right. it. God bless you. God bless. All right, y'all, that's it for me today. Y'all wore me out. I got to get off. I've been on long enough. It was a good, it was a good show today. It was a good show today. It was a good show. It was a good show. Good show. Good show. Let me turn this off because y'all going to still keep on trying to call me. All right. Good show. Make sure, you know, if y'all like to show, hit me on the donation. I, you know, I appreciate donations. I'll do this. If I got more donations, I'll do this all the time. Let me turn my ring. Y'all are still going to go keep on calling me. Let me turn my ring off real quick. Y'all are still going to keep on calling me and everything. But, you know, I, I appreciate donations. If person, people get donations, they come on like every day. You know, I do stuff for free if y'all just donate. And I do SBC University for free. You know, if it's just donate, you know, I do know that if everybody on this call do- donated a dollar, just a dollar, every time I came on, I come on this motherfucker every day. <laughs> I come on every day. If everybody just donated a dollar, I come on every day. Every day, I'd come on, get that little $427 or whatever it is. <laughs> I get it. Somebody be mad about it too, man. I can't, I can't stand that nigga. I need to get $27. Every time he come on the internet. <laughs> Nobody be mad, be a hater out there somewhere mad about that little $425. But I'd appreciate it. I'd love it. I'd love it. Anyway, I want to thank all of you. I want to thank you all of you, my supporters. I appreciate you. Uh, the spirit and intent of this broadcast was not to offend anyone or disparage any particular race. I love all human beings. I love all people. Um, I've always been like that. I've never been the kind of person, you know, I enjoy the different cultures that people, you know, I enjoy the Jewish culture. I enjoy the Chinese culture. I enjoy the Japanese culture. I enjoy the European culture. I I, I, I find something beautiful in all of it. I like the wisdom. I read a lot of the different uh, philosophers from all these different cultures. I'm a, I'm a st- avid student of comparative religious studies. I look at search it all. But what I don't like, is when somebody doesn't show me that same respect for my culture and my people. We nobody's pawns or anything like that. We have contributed heavily to history and to this planet. It may be covered up. Some people don't like to do it because they like to, you know, justify putting people into slavery and things like that. But nah, (laughs) nah, you know, I'm an advocate. I'm an advocate, you know, for truth, justice in the American way. Anyway, you've been listening to the hottest radio network on the planet. My name is Yusuf L. I want to thank all of you for listening. I will catch y'all on the next show. Peace to the gods. Read. Peace, y'all. I'm out.